I want to call this meeting of the Belton Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. A quorum of board members is present. This meeting's been duly called and posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. If you'll join me in the pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you all for joining us this evening. This is uh, one of those annually very significant meetings. So we will begin our meeting. <coughs> Just want to thank you all for coming. But we're going to begin our meeting with canvassing the votes. So, Dr. King Cannon, would you like to talk to us about the results of the trustee election first. Um, yes, you have the results in your packet. The results are in your packet. Excuse me, turn the microphone on here. Um, for, for our trustee election, um, Janet Lee had 1,621 votes. Ty Taggart, 1,629 votes. Jason Carruthers, 1,155 votes. Carrie Pearson, 1,566 votes. Um, we've provided the um, sheets for you to look at if you have any interest in doing that. Look at these. Anybody want to look at the tally um, sheets? They're basically order, what we've been given. And you have an order there to um, approve the results. Of these this are election. signed by all the election judges. If anybody wants to see them, it's the same information. Hey. So we just need um, asking what? for your approval. Okay. Um, before we get that, I want to say a special thank you to all of our election workers and judges and those who worked especially to Dora Martinez and Dorothy Zaka. They're not here, probably, I don't think, uh, but they work especially hard to help work with our election workers and judges, and so we very much appreciate, very much appreciate their work. Okay, we'll entertain a motion to approve the, uh, uh, the results of the trustee election. To declare the results of the May 6th, Okay, we'll get the official the language right. Election. You got it. Somebody make that motion. <laughs> Official. You just do it from the, the heading there. Yep. And we'll sign all that stuff. Is there a motion? I have a motion for Mr. Cowan. Second, Ms. Jordan. Any comments or questions? All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Second okay, canvassing is for is the to, uh, bond issue. To take action regarding uh, the canvassing of returns and declaring the results of the bond election that was held on May 6, 2017. And you have that information in your packet. It's on the screen as well. Um, there were a total of 3,436 votes, 1,916, about 56% uh, for, and 1,520, about 44% against. Okay, so we'll entertain a motion to canvas the returns and declare the results of the bond election as presented. Motion for Mr. Norwood wants to make this oh, second for Mr. Camden. Sorry, I missed it. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, questions? All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. And that certainly passes unanimously. Again, thank you for all the work to the election judges uh, for you presenting this and providing the information to us. And uh, congratulations to everyone involved in that process. Before we uh, I should have said this a minute ago, but before we swear in our new trustees, we'd like to take a moment to recognize our outgoing trustees. And uh, Jason Carruthers and, and Amanda Winkler joined us in 2011, and for the last six years have, have worked with uh, this board and this district and this community, especially uh, over the last four years, planning for the roadmap to 2025 their contributions and, and involvement in that process cannot be overstated and our thanks as a community to to the two of you can't be overstated so on behalf of of me thank you jason thank you amanda for your willingness to take on this task to your families for their willingness to take on the responsibility of being a trustee and thank you for um helping us get to this point and managing our growth you've done an excellent job and and again Great thanks to, to the two of you for the work you've done for the last six years. What I'd like to do is open that up to any other board members. Mike, I'll sure. go to you next. Okay. Turn on my mic. 
Um, well, this is very difficult for me uh, because I appreciate both of these individuals so much. Um, but one thing about our board that I really appreciate is our diversity. Um, I think what, what makes our board great and operate so well together is that we are also different. We have different backgrounds. Um, we take different approaches when we're looking to make decisions and, um, and I appreciate that. I think that's a, an important piece of an effective, uh, an effective board. Um, and these two epitomize that. Uh, Amanda's a very compassionate educator uh, with a great heart um, and a caring soul. She's the, the cheerleader of our, of our board. Uh, and I appreciate that because I'm sort of the opposite of that. Um, Jason is uh, very knowledgeable, uh, no-nonsense developer with a great history and great information and, and background and knowledge that he, he brought to the board. Um, but one thing about these two, uh, you could always count on um, them having a great heart. They both have a great heart, something they have in common. Uh, and they use that heart when, when making decisions uh, for BISD, for our community, and, and more importantly, for, for our kids. Um, and I appreciate that. I'm going to miss, miss you both uh, tremendously, and I've enjoyed the time, the time that we've had. So thank you both. Sue? I'm going to put my back to Amanda because she makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't look at her right now, but I will say this, Mr. Carruthers, you know, I've only been here just two years shy of what you all have been here, and you've taught me a lot by the things that you say, and a lot of times by the things that you don't say, your mannerisms on how you handle particular subjects and things. I really admire that about you. I'm going to miss you. I appreciate you. Uh, you've just been a great uh, contributor to all things Bond. And uh, because of you and the work that uh, the rest of this board has done and Amanda, uh, that Bond got passed. And just really appreciate you for that. And the community is ever more going to be grateful for that because they're going to uh, benefit from the things that are going to come out of that. So thank you very, very much. <coughs> we'll try to look over here at her. <coughs> Amanda is a very passionate person. She uh, has led this board with a mother's heart. And uh, she doesn't, she didn't cut her tongue. Uh, you know, sometimes when we, we sit up here, we try to be politically correct and we're trying to say the right things. And Amanda just comes from the cuff. It is what it is. You get it the way you got it. And that's the way it should be because it's honest. Uh, these, both of these individuals are people who have led with distinction and great integrity. And I just appreciate knowing both of you. Thank you. Yeah. I always love following Sue because she says things so <laughs> eloquently and then I follow up like, well, here we go. Um, guys, I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, I've been on the board a couple years now and y'all have helped a lot whether you realize that or not. Um, very few people know what it means to, to do this and to serve in this capacity. And I truly appreciate that. And the help that you've given and the leadership and pushing in certain things, and it, it, it truly means a lot. And thank you. Okay, Jeff. Well, on mine, um, probably a little bit different take is because is, I'm the rookie and then until y'all come on. <laughs> and, and so, it, like he said, you don't really understand what you get into until you get here. Well, they had done so much work on the bond before I ever got here that it was a little bit easier. And, and I know the work and the hours they put in because I know what I've done in the last year. But even more than that, so I sit on this end where I've always sat with Amanda. So she secretly has kind of helped me through all the meetings, do this, don't do that. Like my first meeting, I had my chair and I was like here and she's like, they can't see you over your name tag, get up. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, little things that y'all don't know that go on. And, um, <laughs> You know, and so I don't make a fool of myself. And then Jason, you know, has been so patient with me because we attend these different events and we go to different things. And he's probably got a million text messages from me. What do we wear? What's it? Because you don't want to be the one person who shows up not knowing. And he always respond, you're fine. Do this, do this, don't do this. So, you know, I just appreciate both of you kind of taking me under your wing. I mean, the whole board did, but you two with her sitting here. And, and I knew Jason previously to just help me kind of fit in and, and not make a complete fool of myself for the first year that I was here. So I really do appreciate it. 
I do. Um, I want to thank both of you for your work over the last uh, six years. It's been a, a long time and we've done a lot of work. Uh, several people mentioned the work that's been done, but we've been growing steadily. Um, and you guys have, have um, helped us grow. You've built a, we built a lot of schools. You've made a lot of important decisions. We've had some good times and we've had some hard times as a team over the last six years and you've been um, solid members of our team and I want to thank you both. Um, Amanda, your love and your kindness and your support of our kids and our staff and of me um, is greatly appreciated and I, I can't thank you enough for that and your enthusiasm for all things um, Belton ISD. And Jason, um, just your vision and um, your commitment to the school district and uh, the quiet strength that you've brought to this board. And you're quiet, but you're strong, and you've helped us a lot, and, I, and, and you love our kids too, and I know that. So um, thank you both for your service. Appreciate you. You get to go before Amanda because I know that's my last gift to you as a board member <laughs> because you want that, right? <laughs> I'll let you. Uh, really want to give you an opportunity to say whatever you want to say. All right. Well, it's been an honor for, uh, for the last six years and a pleasure being here, working with all of you, past board members, all the administrators. We have such a great district, something that all the whole community should be proud of from West Temple to South Belton to East and West. It's something that we've all come together for many years from the past alumni. Uh, it's just a great place to be. My business is in, builds and develops in several different school districts. And uh, by far, this one is probably the easiest to uh, do business with and know that that growth plan has been there and always there. It's not a point where a lot of places we work with, they're always working behind, 10 years behind. And so where I felt the entire time I've been here, we've been working five, six, 10, 15 years ahead of things. Seems a little wild sometimes when people are not educated as well as we are. Um, it takes a lot of information to get out to the public when you go into bonds that still, no matter what you do, community meetings and everything to get the word out, there's still so many are just uneducated about the process and don't understand that most of the kids that are pushing this next bond are already enrolled in our school district. It's a very simple question and answer if they would just listen. Uh, we know it's going to be very difficult when we sit here and move the bond up from uh, November to May. Um, I think on the way out, I uh, probably mentioned that I probably just uh, made my exit by uh, pushing the motion forward to pull that bond. But, you know, it's the right thing. It was the right thing for the community. By pushing that bond forward, six months of voting time saved us 13 to 14 million estimated in construction cost. So with that all part, man, it's been a pleasure. We came on together. We're going to walk out together. So, thank you all. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. You know, I agree. It does feel like it kind of was meant to be in a way. We, we pushed really hard. Jason and I came in six years ago saying, where's our plan and why aren't we there yet? Um, and so, you know, I feel like we have definitely come full circle a really long way with some things that were tough. I think a lot of you don't realize that uh, we don't always agree, uh, and that's okay. We've had some very, very uh, good conversations and time to grow, and, um, you know, I think that's great. That's what I appreciate most about the board, because a lot of times, because I think we are so professional and we do love our kids, that it, it's an image that we always agree and, and always what we say yes to is perfect, uh, but we it takes us a road to get there sometimes, and that's where that diverse group comes from. Uh, and I have no doubt that Ty and Janet both are going to do a great job with that. It is bittersweet um, because I, I feel, like I said earlier, it's like a breakup. It's a breakup with a group of people that I've lived with for six years, and it's like going to college and you move on or something. And so um, it is bittersweet. Um, I'm excited to be mom and home and resting and taking care of myself and my family um, and that's what I need to do but um, I'm not far so Ty and Janet you're still going to see me um, and, and now I can just be on that podium when I need to be but I don't anticipate that my voice will stop being heard I don't anticipate that my support will stop neither will Jason's um, we can just do it differently so it's been an honor it was a dream come true and I um, 
am proud of myself for being able to accomplish it, but more so that we as a team accomplish this bond and we can move forward and not have to worry about where our kids might be in five or 10 years. So thank you, I love you all, and I have friendships for life, and I appreciate you for that. All right, let me, uh, we have some parting gifts, but before I get to that, I wanna uh, just add, um, I meant to look it up how many students we had enrolled in 2011 when they came on, Ooh. but we, we have some history, but, but we've yeah. grown substantially. We've had two bond <laughs> issues where we've addressed yeah. growth. We've spent, I don't know how many hours in meetings mm -hmm. and planning mm -hmm. and trying to exploring options together uh, over those last six years. And so uh, again, uh, we, I, and we as a community owe both of you a great debt of gratitude. And, and I've always said, there's a couple of people out, in, at least a couple out in the audience who are former board members, and they, they've heard, we say this a lot, once a board member, always a board member, because you, you know things, you learn, you, we go to training and we learn, and, and I believe that for you, for the two of you, you will always be board members and ambassadors for the school district and those that we can call on to come be on advisory committees and help us plan and think because you will have that perspective that's helpful. So thank you for your service. Uh, we do have a couple of things for you. So come on out to the front and let's say everybody come out to the front. We're gonna take our final picture together as a group. Go ahead. Make sure I give you the right one. Our uh, scripts and trades crew, Craig Sullivan, have created for you that. Plus, we give you that. You can show that off everybody. And the most valuable thing in town, the big red pass. You get in anything, lifetime pass. You get in everywhere. Let's uh, let's find a way to surround them. Oh, let's get in. Yeah, let's surround them. Get, get around them. Get them in the middle and let's surround them. And then we'll give them their name. <laughs> oh, don't cry. Now you're supposed to smile. You could wink and see. Okay, smile at Sandy. We all want one more picture with our feet. Thank you all for allowing us a moment. Uh, we spend a lot of time together. And it is important for us. It is important for us to have that opportunity to uh, do family. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna You know, I uh, kind of, we ran through the canvassing and want to get to this, but, but I want to pause just a minute. We passed a bond issue in this community. Um, and we did what, what many of us and many people said years ago couldn't be done. Um, and it's a real tribute to our community coming together, not just for the election, but over the last several years to plan and work together to come up with a plan that our voters would support. So we're very thankful for that. Um, now, as we thank and celebrate and uh, say goodbye to uh, Jason and Amanda, we want to welcome Janet and Ty. So, our next uh, our next item is to administer an oath of office to our new newly elected trustees. So, y'all come on up to the front. Connie's going to take care of that. Did she did she have something for you? Come on up, stand up here. There you go. Does she have something for you to hold? <laughs> you both would raise your right hand, repeat after me, where I say my name, please state your name. I, Connie Torres, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duty of the office. the Belton Independent School District of the State of Texas and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state. So help me God. Please would both sign your name.
your name here and your As they are signing, would the families, Janet and Ty's families, please stand for recognition. One of the things we know better as well as anybody, it takes a family to do this. Thank you all. You know, I, I asked the families to stand, and one of the things that, that I hope everyone <laughs> understands is our families make a conscious choice and a decision to be part of this, and they make sacrifices, and they um, make choices. Good job. Go get it. Come on. Just keep taking them. We're all about now. Nah, and her. <laughs> That's so great. He wants mom in there. We are excited to be here. We're excited to have you all join us. Welcome. Janet, do you have anything you'd like to say? Just push the button. Oh, there you okay. go. Jeff, take care of you. <laughs> I am beyond humbled for this experience. I mean, this is this is incredible. This is beyond anything I thought I could actually do. And to serve with this board of people that I know are such a positive influence on this community. I'm so humbled and I'm so excited. Uh, Belton is on the brink of so many different changes and new adventures and to get to be a part of that is, is incredible. And I just wanna thank everybody so much for this chance. Thank you. Ty? You got the mic, man. Come on, all right. On. <laughs> well, this is uh, such an honor for me uh, growing up here in Belton. Uh, to be sworn in here to uh, uh, something that, I, that really means a lot to me, right across the street from the place where our family was raised, it means the world to me. Uh, Taggarts have been serving this community and this school district for a long time, and I'm very proud to follow in those footsteps with the other Taggarts. My Uncle Jay Taggart, former board member, board president of this very board. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank the people on my campaign committee who are here, John Holmes, Allie Thompson, Mike Pilkington, uh, anybody else I miss? Thank y'all so much for all y'all's help. It was a really long two and a half months. We worked really, really hard. Uh, we really did, but it was something that we wanted really bad, and we knew we were going to have to work to do that. I look forward to uh, serving this district. Uh, thank you to my family for being here. Our family's always there for each other. So uh, just ready to roll up my sleeves and, and get to work. Awesome. Well, welcome again. We're glad to have you here and look forward to how you make us better. One of the things we say to all of our new employees, uh, as well as our new board members, is we like where we've been headed, but we have to get better and we want to continue to. And so you all bring new ideas, new perspectives, and, and we expect you to help us continue to get better. So thank you for, for throwing in with us and all yeah. that. Okay, our next item, uh, and we do this each year as we uh, elect new or swear in new uh, board members is to reorganize the board. That's where we elect our officers. So I will entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to uh, keep as president uh, Sue M. Jordan as secretary, Mike Cowan as vice president, and Randy Pittenger as president. Okay. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. I have a second. Any other nominations? <laughs> All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to continue serving. Um, at this time, the board will go into closed session to discuss personnel and real estate and take a little break. So maybe hugs time. So <laughs> your attention, please. 
we uh, it is six o'clock or six oh one, and we will reconvene in open session. Uh, as we do it at all of our monthly meetings, we like to recognize our students and our staff for the great things they're doing. And so tonight's no exception to that. We have a number of students we're going to recognize in a wide variety of activities. Um, and so thank you for joining us. Let me give some ground rules for those of you that haven't been before. We'll take each group as, uh, as a group and recognize, have you come up to the front? We, a board member will come out and, and give you a certificate, but stay up here for photos. Parents, family, please come take pictures. We will take time for that. Sandy will be taking pic an official picture for our website and social media, <laughs> but we want you to take pictures too. So please come up and do that. If, you're, if your kids say they don't want you to take a picture, they really do, so come on up and <laughs> it's okay. We'll take as much time as we need to recognize and take as many pictures as we need of each group. So Kyle, you wanna get us started with the Duke TIP recognized students? Thank you, Mr. Pittenger. Uh, the Duke TIP Talent Search is a long established program that's been in place for 37 years to identify academically gifted and talented students. Students who are part of the Duke TIP Talent Search get a number of benefits, but one of which is that as middle school students, they have the opportunity to take the ACT or the SAT. Uh, Duke TIP then recognizes students who score at or above the national average of recent high school graduates. So again, these are middle school students scoring at or above the national average of high school seniors. And this year we have 16 Belton ISD students who received recognition in the state of Texas for reaching that mark. Um, we'll start with our Duke TIP state recognized students from Lake Belton Middle School, and they are Jackson Bella Bragic, Helena Brew. Come on up as your name called. Come on up and Mr. Cowan has a certificate for you. You get to be the first group to come up and then stand up here and as a group. Scott Butler, Laurel Ferris, Rajul Gupta, Andrew Johnson, Wesley Kincaid, Jackson Reisner, and Megan Shelburne. From South Belton Middle School, we have Savannah Fish, Grace Moyer, Maheshwari Rajesh, and Krithika Rajesh. And from North Belton Middle School, we have Michaela Johnston, Garrett Lazat, and Lily Settle. Come on in, squeeze in. All right, is that, we get them all? I believe we do. All right, y'all squeeze in. Come on up here and squeeze in. Hang on just a second, we'll get everybody. There you go. All right, y'all squeeze in a little tighter. Come on now. We have to come up. Two, how about two rows? How about some of y'all step up on this podium behind you? Young step up, there you go. Half of you. And now squeeze in. That helps block us out of the picture. All right, moms and dads, take pictures. Mike, get in there with them. We like to be in with extra smart, excelling students. Okay, smile. Lots of cameras. Look left, look right, look straight ahead. And y'all have to tell me when we get everybody's pictures taken because I can't see. Keep smiling. Oh, we have another one. Come on in. Come join us. Come on. Come on. Mike, you got a certificate? Oh, we got a couple more. There you go. Mike, give them some certificates. And make sure you're holding them right side up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, squeeze in, squeeze in. There you go. Okay, now let's see, get some smiles. Any more? Keep smiling. How are we doing? I think we're good. All right. Congratulations, guys. Now, what we know, students, 
is that you've been given an opportunity to learn. And I know some of you think that that was like no big deal. You just took some test and turned out really well. But you have an opportunity to learn to, to how to take that test even better so that you be, can become a National Merit Scholar or more prestigious than that, a superintendent scholar, right? Absolutely. So we'll look forward to seeing you back here uh, at a later time. Just okay, right. our next group is the FFA state qualifiers. So we have a, a number of FFA teams that have been competing in state competitions throughout the past month. And uh, we want to start out by recognizing the entomology team. Uh, they recently traveled to Texas Tech and came in as one of the top 50 teams out of 250 competing at that competition. Uh, that team consists of Shania Ward, Ruben Latimer, Bailey Peacock, and Matthew Fuller. Come on up, guys. Anybody here? Come on up. Come with them. Sue will help you, Ty. She's Sue. Come on up, make way for our state qualifiers. All right, good luck guys, bring them all in. <clears throat> Look at, they're all waiting in the wings in line. Boy, that's impressive. Y'all come on up and just line up up here. The uh, Environment and Natural Resources team yeah. took third place at their competition at Tarleton State. That team's Tyler Kasner, Trey Bell, Cameron Parker, and Kyle Hobbs. On uh, April 28th, the nursery and landscape team competed in the state contest at Sam Houston State University. That team includes Bailey Elliott, Grace Green, and Nadia Ruiz. And on April 29th, so in quick succession, another team headed out for the state veterinary science contest hosted by Texas A&M University. And they finished in the top 70 teams out of more than 500 there. Uh, that Ooh. team was made up of Celeste August, Caitlin Lewis, Amber Wilson, and Francesca Landon Harding. Awesome. And I believe the one and only Brad Hobbs is here too with them. Is that right? Come on over, fill the front up. Okay. So this runs the gamut from bugs to, I don't know what, All right. veterinary, I, bugs and animals. Mr. Hobbs, join in the picture and smile, man. You're proud of these guys, aren't you? <laughs> All right, y'all smile. Look ahead. Parents, family, friends, take lots of pictures. Our FFA program is um, among the top in the state. Always bring home lots of awards, do great things, have great participation of our students. And we are so proud of our students and our faculty and, and the program that, that uh, they have and the opportunities they provide our students. Thank you, Mr. Hobbs, for your work and giving these students the opportunity. How are we doing on pictures? Are we done? All right, congrats. Can't see. This is kind of a strange view from back here. I don't know what y'all are doing out there. All right, great. Look forward to seeing that. Okay, well, we have a real superstar to recognize now. This is an extraordinary uh, first time we've ever had something of this nature, but a uh, real national recognition for one of our Tiger Media photographers. And I'm going to start by just saying, look at that photo. Awesome. <laughs> that photo was taken by BHS senior McKenna Thompson, and with 46% of the votes cast online. It came out as one of five photographs selected for the Friday Night Football magazine, Friday Night Football Texas Photographers of the Year lineup. So we're really excited that uh, McKenna's photo resonated with online Where's voters. McKenna hiding? Come on up here. Resonates with us. Mr. Fitzwater, come on up. Make her get up here. How about that, McKenna? <laughs> That is an awesome picture of our Tigers, Peyton Mansell going airborne to score a touchdown. My claim to fame is I was standing next to McKenna when she took that picture. <laughs> That's as close as I can get to that kind of recognition. How awesome. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. You better get this photo right. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Fitzwater. Congratulations, McKenna. <laughs> that is a big deal. 
All right. Well, our next is our by district softball champions and recently named all district superstars. Absolutely. The uh, Lady Tigers turned in a, a commanding performance in the first round of the playoffs to claim the by district championship. Game one saw a no hitter uh, with a, a 14 0 score, and game two was just another solid oh, win. Man. The Tigers are coached wow. by Matt Blackburn. You got a, you got a good selection of the team, right? Yeah. All right, we got one strip. Now, now I understand today we released some all district honors. Is that right? Awesome. Yeah. Really proud of. We've got a offensive. Uh, it's not MVP. What's it called? Player Most outstanding of player of the year. Thank you. Offensive player of the year. Bethany got a bunch of first teamers. Yeah. Some seven, 11, six, Eleven kids. 11. That's pretty awesome. How many? That's more than you can put on the field at once, right? Well, we had all of our <laughs> offensive players and then both of our pitchers got uh, First awards. That's team awesome. Great. That says a lot about the program, says a lot about this team. And, wow, y'all were a lot of fun to watch. We're proud of you. Okay, look out there and smile for <laughs> pictures. I won't distract you too much. There you, come on, y'all know how to do this. Do it like you're take, like I'm taking it. It was a great season. We enjoyed watching you all. Thank you for representing Belton and Belton High School in such a great way. Uh, Lady Tiger softball team rocks. <laughs> Their season ended a little bit earlier than we all wanted, but they had an outstanding season. We're really proud of them. All right, how about our National History Day qualifiers? On Saturday, April 29th, North Belton Middle School students Emily Maslovsky and Maya Richardson competed at Texas History Day. They brought bling. Their uh, documentary, Zagoda Secret Stand, took second place and qualified them to advance to the National History Day, which will be held in Washington, D.C. in June. Uh, Elizabeth Housen is their teacher and sponsor. Come on up. Come on. This is, this is impressive. This is awesome. So... So we get to go to Washington, D.C., is that right? Yes. That's cool. Okay, take a picture and then we'll talk. They get to go. So, so y'all are going, tell us br briefly what. You're taking pictures? Oh, yeah, take more pictures. That's even more important. Okay, I want to know what it is. Can you give us a brief, the elevator speech of what to go to a secret stand is? Oh, okay, awesome. And you won second place, so you're going to Washington, D.C. in June? That's pretty sweet, huh? Very awesome. Thank you for bringing your bling. I like that. Congratulations. We're proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Housen. We appreciate your work with our kids and giving them that opportunity. What a great opportunity. Okay, how about our uh, state solo and ensemble? Uh, Randy, Yo. Sorry. You need to go back up one. Did I miss something? We did. That's why I had the wrong. Oh, I am so hand. sorry. Uh, <laughs> I can't read. We missed the, the National Junior Honor Society Outstanding Achievement Awards. We I am did. so sorry. And this is something would we never forgive me for. don't want to miss because it's a prestigious national award. In the entire state of Texas, there were just 75 students who were chosen, chosen for the National Junior Honor Society Outstanding Achievement Award this year. And four of those 75 kids are at North Belton Middle School. Wow. So tonight, uh, we want to recognize eighth graders Grace Pohl, Thomas Galloway, Veronica Morales, and Ella Pousset. There you go. It's Tab here. And as you mentioned, Tab Lloyd is their sponsor. Come on up, Tab. Come on, join, join the party. This is awesome. Yes, of course it is. And you helped provide them that opportunity. And we're so thankful for y'all's work in making that happen. Some of our great leaders. Great job, guys. Proud of you. All right, if I'd keep my glasses on, I'd be better, but um, how about 
our state solo and ensemble fine arts qualifiers. This is a really big group, and so good luck y'all coordinating this one. <laughs> but y'all come on, on up and challenge we'll it. They'll, they'll do what they can. Start with this the is uh, great because we have so many who qualified for the state contest. Those orchestra students are Elizabeth DeVoe, Mariah Montgomery, Antoinette Lynn, Tom Bednars, and Celia Bowen. There they go. Yay. Nice to have you back. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad y'all are here. Very cool. How about that? Let's take a picture of our orchestra students. Get in there. There you go. So proud of our orchestra program. I, uh, for those of you that weren't at the banquet last week, um, we started this program 10 years ago. Uh, the board had a vision and a dream for this, and Dr. King Cannon went and made it happen for us. And we started with seven students, and now we have a booming program that's growing every year and uh 200 ish yeah. students amazing what we've done y'all are awesome You're and great. look at this the results proud y'all great job all right good deal we'll get the let's get the next group our choir students who qualified for the state solo and ensemble contest are keaton mitchell nathan leblanc rachel Lueleb, allegra yauk Connor Cox, Cara Fish, Adriana Hernandez, Sierra Reisner, Andrew Holcomb, oh. Emily Barnes, mm -hmm. Bailey O'Bannon, mm -hmm. Ashley Barnes, Bell. Tino De La Rosa, Yay. Julia Hogger, and Quinn Pierce. How about our awesome choir students? All right, Leo, get in that. Photos. Y'all got this down, looking left, looking right. Great job. We have such a wonderful choir uh, history of a great choir program, and these are some awesome students doing great things. Well done. Proud of you guys. All right, how about our band students? We've got a big group of bands. We have a, a great group of band students who are advancing to state, and they include Celica Castro, Abigail Olson, Reagan Day, Jaden Rudloff, Ronaldo Ramirez. Hector Flores, Ryan Christian, Madeline LeBlanc, Cameron DeHart, Macon Schilling. Where's the band? Emily Miller. <laughs> oh, no. Colin Olkins, Trent Oloa, Andrew Heffron. Well, we're going to clap. For Reagan Pilgrim, Daniel Molina, Ethan Burstett, Logan Stone, Dylan Weeks, Jasmine Curley. Savannah Foster, Callie Matson, Michaela Parker, Valerie Arraz, Kayla Delgado, Edgar Sanchez, Amber Vicasi, Anastasia DeWitty, Jamie Flowers, Kristen Geibel, Ashley Ray, Sarah Beauchamp, Sienna Palacios, Rebecca Thomas, and Rupo Zhao. Okay, well, one of the things I know as a former band parent is it takes a family to do bands, so parents, if your child, if you're here and your child was is being recognized, would you come up and represent them and accept the award? We'd like that. Or they're all at the clinic too. Okay, we will go find them after the meeting. We may go chase them down. Let's clap for them though. How about that? All right. All right, how about, let's try, how about the U.S. News and World Report Best High School Bronze Medal for Belton New Tech High School at Wasco? I'd like to invite Jill Ross, the principal of our Bronze Medal campus, up 
This is uh, another one of the many recognitions that Belton New Tech High School at Wasco has received. We'll find them. The bronze medal is awarded to a, a small group of schools that U.S. News and World Report selects as representing uh, the best high schools nationwide. Congratulations. We know the awards just keep coming for New Tech, don't they? Thank you. For, for your leadership of our students and our staff at New Tech. Great things are happening there. Um, okay, how about the Temple Daily Telegram Golden Apple Award? I think one of the things that's really cool about this award, in addition to being a long-running tradition, it's nominated by students who acknowledge teachers who have made an impact and a difference in their life. Uh, this year, just five teachers were chosen across the Temple Daily Telegram's area from dozens of nominations, and Ryan Young was honored as one of those five. Uh, she is finishing her sixth year as a fifth grade math and science teacher at High Point Elementary School. Come on up. Don't be shy. You know, oh, come on. I was just about to say, the, the neat thing about this program is this is student nominated. Joshua, come on up, man. This is awesome. So, so I didn't know Joshua was here, but I was going to say, I really love this program, especially because it's student. It's not, not from us. It's from a student. And Joshua, thank you for taking the time to write a letter uh, about your teacher. That's pretty special. I read it. That was impressive. Good job. She's pretty special, isn't she? Thanks. Yeah, good so, job. Yeah. Well done. So that says a lot about you and her. Proud of you. Congratulations. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> that was cute. All right, how about the uh, HEB Excellence in Education Awards semifinalist? Every year, HEB receives thousands of nominations for their Excellence in Education Awards, and out of that, they choose just 239 semifinalists statewide, and just 40 of those semifinalists are principals. Uh, this year, Leon Heights principal Tiffany Weiss was one of those 40 principals chosen um, on the basis of leadership and campus culture, instructional leadership and management, and communication and community relations. Congratulations, <laughs> Tiffany. It's been a big year for Tiffany and Leon Heights. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Well, we want to recognize, we want to first of all thank the Temple Rotary Club for doing the Educator of the Month, and let's recognize. Absolutely. Our um, Temple has not has re is here to recognize um, Shannon Jacobson from High Point Elementary. And Shannon is in her eighth year in education and her fifth year with the district. Ms. Jacobson exemplifies the role of a kindergarten teacher with her endless patience and kindness. She is willing to take on tough challenges and does everything within her power to positively <laughs> influence all she comes in contact with. Shannon's a learner. She's always willing to try something new if she knows it's best for her kids. And Amy Armstrong, principal at High Point Elementary, stated, once a student has been listed on Miss Jacobson's roster, they are forever hers in her heart. I truly believe she has a special gift of working with young people. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah. Congratulations. We appreciate you. And I understand you've already had lunch. Is that right? You already got your special lunch at Rotary Club? Is that right? Do you get to go? Awesome. Good deal. Glad you got to do that. And again, we're so appreciative of the Rotary Club for doing that. Okay. And finally, we want to recognize our Big Red community partners. We have two tonight we're going to recognize. So we recognize a number of students every month, but I think one of the things that's really cool is the way that our community supports and also celebrates and recognizes students and both of this month's Big Red community partners, the Belton Kiwanis Club and American Legion Post 55, are right now engaged in programs that honor and celebrate outstanding students at our campuses around the district. Uh, the Kiwanis Club presents citizenship awards to uh, students at each school who are chosen by staff members on the basis of their service to others, responsibility, scholarship, honor, leadership, and patriotism. 
And the American Legion Post presents the American Legion School Award to a fifth grade boy and girl at each of our elementary schools to recognize them for courage, leadership, honor, service, and scholarship. Uh, the list of the things that both of these groups do for our students goes on and on, but it's, it's really exciting uh, tonight to thank them and to recognize them in particular for celebrating our students and our students' success. These are these really are extraordinary groups, and, and I guess we should post for a picture and then I'll talk. Both of these organizations, and I, I wanted we wanted to recognize them and say a special thank you, not just for the um, the one-time thing that you do, but the ongoing things you do across our district at all levels for our students. It's amazing to me how how invested you are in our kids. Money and time is amazing things. Don't be great things. We appreciate it. Thank you. You know what makes, uh, one of the things that makes Belton great is the uh, community involvement and the partnership that we have. We have an extraordinary opportunity uh, provided to our kids because of the uh, work of, of our community partners. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, I, don't, I think we got through them all, unless I missed any. anybody got any certificates left. I do want to mention uh, just quickly today, um, our top uh, graduates were treated to lunch uh, by Kela Home Builders and BBVA Compass. That's a, become a really neat annual tradition uh, for our top students. I think they talk, take the top 10 from Belton High School and mm -hmm. top five from Belton New Tech High School That's at Wasco. Five. Is that right? Yes. Really wonderful opportunity, and we, we just appreciate their willingness to do that. Um, and I also wanted to just mention, um, you know, this is banquet season and it's the season for end of year concerts and events. <laughs> our, our students have been excelling in a lot of ways and it's been such a neat thing to see them recognized and honored for, for what, they're done, what they've done. The booster clubs do such a great job of honoring and recognizing them. Um, and we've also, I wanna say a special thank you to our HR department, human resources folks who have taken uh, our service awards to the campuses kind of grouped them together and honored our staff for their years of service. We had, Todd, tw over 1,200 years of service. 2, we were Over 2,000. I never can get the number. 2,074, I don't know where I got 1,200. 2,074 years of service um, were recognized uh, throughout our district over the last few weeks. And uh, HR does a great job of providing that. They get a service pin and some recognition. Uh, from their peers and as well as us. Great opportunity. So thank you for doing that. It says a lot about our community. Okay, that's all the recognitions I have unless anybody had anything else. Okay, let's move on. Next item on our agenda is public comments. I didn't see anybody who had signed up. Is there any item, anyone wishing to address the board? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. Does any board member have any item they like pulled from the consent agenda? I will mention we're going to pull <coughs> item J from the consent agenda for uh, discussion. Uh, any others that you'd like to pull? Okay, let me mention what those items are. We have the minutes of the April 17th, 2017 regular board meeting, the unaudited financial report for the month ending April 30th, 2017. We have the gifts, grants, and bequests that is only for information only, uh, but it's there and we certainly are appreciative of, of that. Uh, very notable on their belt band boosters who are present tonight. $38,000 raised through their efforts uh, are given for summer band, fall show, marching band, winter guard, contracted services, et cetera. Uh, tremendous work by a lot of folks who, who spend a great deal of time in uh, investing in their kids. And so very thankful for that as we are to the service center for awarding a technology grant to Brooke uh, and uh, Sungren Kim and uh, we, even got, we have plumbing, there you go. So we're very appreciative of all those uh, donations. We have some expenditures, over $50,000 requiring our approval. These are our budgeted renewals, so that's significant, uh, but so they're ongoing expenditures that are in our budget. Uh, the first one's for, but they still take our, our approval. Uh, Renaissance Learning Renewal is $115,863.42. 
Mentoring Minds Renewal is $94,315.41. Uh, STEM Scopes Renewal is $121,362.50. And then we have the CT Graphic Design Computer Lab. This is a replacement uh, because they're aging. Uh, to replace that lab in the amount of $56,861. And then the renewal for communities and schools. Um, our part of that is $189,879. And it's important to note that that's 45% of the total of 421,954 CIS funds, the other 55% of that cost. We're thankful for our partnership with communities and schools. We have the roof coping repair at Chisholm Trail Elementary, RCSP 17049051599. This is to approve the ranking of proposals for the roof coping repair at Chisholm Trail Elementary as presented and approve the expenditure and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute a contract for the project on behalf of the district. This is noted notable that it's an insurance claim, so we'll only be responsible for our deductible. Um, but it is to prove the base bid in the amount of $67,946 as submitted by Guest Roofing Company. We have the resolution of hazardous traffic conditions. This is an annual um, uh, action that we take for bus routes inside the two-mile radius of campuses. There are no changes uh, recommended this year, and so we'll, we have that continuing. Uh, we have the meal prices for 2017-18. Uh, with some slight changes as are required um, as presented. We have a low, wave, low attendance day waiver to submit to the TEA for the April 11th, 2017 uh, bad weather we had, which had low attendance. We have revisions <laughs> to EIC local and EIE local, uh, second reading. And we have, we'll skip J. We have the selection of the construction delivery method for the Wall Street Auditorium upgrades and Lakewood Elementary music classrooms and gymnasium addition projects and authorize the superintendent to issue requests for proposals for the projects, select a committee to evaluate and rank the proposals and bring the recommendation rankings back to the board for approval for each project. This is to approve the competitive sealed proposal as the delivery method for those projects. And finally, we have change order number four for the Automotive Technology Building and Construction Technology Outdoor Shop Project. Uh, this has um, some increased costs and some uh, savings or cost savings uh, with a net increase of $10,621. That is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Motion from Mr. Norwood, second from Mr. Cowan. All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. Passes unanimously. Now, let's go back and pick up item J, which is the resolution for the purchase of property. Dr. Okay. King Cannon? Yes, um, this is to approve a resolution to purchase approximately 19 acres of land um, at the Second Comprehensive High School on FM 2483, <coughs> uh, just west of our current site. Uh, the board authorized the superintendent to contract for the, the property at its December 2016 meeting. It's something we've been working on for a while. Um, our architects, Jared, uh, has shown uh, several pictures with and without of the site plan with and without um, this tract of land. Um, I think it's important to note that we did give up some acreage to the city of Temple um, as a part of the city's efforts to expand Prairie View Road across and in front of, of the new comprehensive high school. Um, and that left a little triangle of land that was cut off. So um, I think it was three to four acres that we ended up losing on that site. And this uh, gives us some additional space to the west of the, the existing piece of property that we own. So we're purchasing um, 18 acres. We're exchanging one, almost one acre, that triangle and the uh, uh, approximate cost is just under $430,000. We don't have the closing statement um, yet, but that's the approximated cost. And so um, Jared's gonna show you the site plan a little bit later, and you can see um, what this property has done for the site. It was tight um, because we lost a little bit of acreage. It was a little bit tighter than we anticipated, and um, this will allow a little more space for the, for the high school campus. And we could have done it, we, as Jared showed us in past months. We, 
we had a plan we could have done it but this allows a little bit more space and some buffer zones what we know is there's going to be houses right up against our property line all that area west uh, very soon and so um you know one thing we know is they're not making any more land and we've learned to buy it when we can and get it when it's available uh but if we don't get it now it's not gonna it's not something we could put off this is kind of what we had concluded before so um i wanted to thank jared for helping us look at that and what the options are and, and in previous months when we looked at it the possibilities we could do it with what we've got but this makes it fit better and see feel better and and i think will help with traffic flow and uh, crowd control and give some flexibility to the site and master planning and so uh, good plan thank you jared for helping us with that process so does anybody have any other questions for uh, uh for dr king cannon okay um angela certainly has played a really important role in this i want to thank you again for your work and in, in helping us figure all that out and uh, this has some implications with the city of temple obviously and we're working with them and and so thank you angela for your work to help us get to this point uh and keeping it all so i'll entertain a motion to uh, to approve the purchase of this land as presented I have a motion from mr cowan second for mr camden any other comments or questions on favor raise a hand well, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, so now let's move to the superintendent's report. Okay. All right. Um, first, I want to talk about graduation activities. We're um, almost there. Graduation ceremonies are scheduled for Thursday evening, June the 1st. Um, at the Bell County Expo Center. Our Belton New Tech High School at Wasco will have their graduation ceremony at 2 o'clock p.m. and Belton High School will graduate at 7 o'clock p.m. We still anticipate uh, graduating a total of 732 students um, between the two campuses and as always um, our board members are stage guests um, for those events and we hope that all of you will be able to make both of those ceremonies. And if you have a child graduating, um, <laughs> then you'll have the opportunity to hand your child their diploma on that uh, on that evening. I've been on the board for less than an hour. He's always got the best perk of being a board member. Yeah, that's one of the best <laughs> perks. It really is. And so that's uh, quite an honor to get to do that. And so you, you'll get to do that, Mr. Taggart. And I think you're the only one this year from the board. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be fun for you. Um, as we get closer to the event, we'll send out some information to you all on where you should report and at what time. Um, high school always provides a meal for us, and we'll have a seating chart um, for that event. So we'll even tell you where to sit when it's you come. It's very organized. <laughs> so it's very organized. You get handed a card with a number on it. Yeah, <laughs> we line Stand up, in and, line. and uh, our <laughs> high school staff does a tremendous job of keeping us organized at that event. And so we just listen and do what we're supposed to do when we go. So um, we're looking forward to that. Um, baccalaureate will be held on Sunday, May the 28th at 2 o'clock p.m. at the First Baptist Church, and that's being sponsored by the Belton Fellowship of Ministers. We want to thank them for doing that. And then, in addition, we have scholarship award ceremonies that will be held for Belton High School um, this Thursday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Performing Arts Center. Hard to believe that's here already. Um, we want to thank our Belton Educational Enrichment Foundation for um, their part and all of the community members who've contributed to scholarships for our seniors. Um, and then next Tuesday evening, we'll have our senior scholarship banquet for Belton New Tech High School at Wasco. That's a dinner event um, that's held at South Belton Middle School again at six o'clock. And so we'll make sure you have invitations for that, but you are, you are uh, welcome to join as well. And then um, next Tuesday is our annual senior walk, and all of our seniors walk the halls at Belton High School. And I believe we're doing that at, at New Tech now. I didn't get the yeah, date of that. It's the last day. Uh, last day is, say it again, Jill. May 31st. Um, at Belton High School, it'll be 830 next Tuesday morning, and I'll send some information out on New Techs. And so graduation's here. We're excited. It's exciting. We work all year to help our kids <coughs> succeed. It's a great time to celebrate. So. Great event. You may excited have seen we announced our um, valedictorian and our salutatorians from both campuses, and we're, we're excited about that. 
Um, our automotive technology facility, I have a couple of pictures to show you, is nearly complete. Um, tomorrow morning, our architects will perform the substantial completion walkthrough and um, prepare a punch list for the contractor. And we do expect the architects to certify the building um, tomorrow as substantially complete. And uh, then the city of Belton will begin inspections for the certificate of occupancy. Um, and our, our instructor, Mr. Bounds, um, is looking forward to moving into the facility, but we won't start classes there this year. We'll begin those in the fall, but he's gonna go ahead and begin to move in and get organized prior to the students coming in the fall. And we're looking for the pictures. Nice to see it coming from the outside, it looks done. I guess they're finishing things Esse inside. Essentially, it is, and uh, we'll have a we'll have a dedication ceremony for the facility in the fall when we get the kids back. Probably looks like a big empty room at this point. It's a shop. It? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, well, they we'll get all the equipment and stuff moved in supplies. I'm going to go on, and if okay. uh, we find those, then we'll put them on. Um, tonight, we reached a major milestone in the 2017 bond program with your certification of the election results. Thank you. Uh, with voter approval for the funding of a new high school, a new elementary school, and our two smaller projects, we can move into a new phase of the bond program, a new phase of work. There are several, several things that will be happening um, simultaneously. There's the picture of the outside. Looks like they were just washing the drive. Um, there's a picture inside of the shop storage. and a um, storage area. Pretty simple, it's a shop. Um, there are several things that are happening simultaneously so we can keep complete the projects on time uh, with the opening of a new elementary school in the fall of 2019 and the high school in the fall of 2020. Um, first, we've already begun working on the sale of the bonds. The bond assumptions that we previously discussed are the same, um, including a $100 million sale later this year the summer and the remainder in, uh, to come in two years. Our financial advisor, Specialized Public Finance, reports that the interest rates remain slightly below the rates that we used in our assumptions um, and has prepared a timetable events, of events to occur between now and August. Remember, our goal was to sell those bonds by the end of August. Um, they will apply for the permanent school fund guarantee by the end of this month. In June, we'll have our rating agency calls with standards and pours. Uh, standard and pours in July, uh, we'll be coming to you to ask you to adopt an order to authorize the issuance of bonds and delegate the authority to serve as pricing agent, uh, as pricing agent within our parameters that you all set in that order um, to Phil and or myself, um, as we've done on our refundings. And then uh, we'll price and award those bond sales at the end of July with an August closing date. So that's coming pretty quickly. And in order to qualify for the existing debt allotment um, during this biennium, the first interest payment on the bonds uh, will be made in August of this year. Next, um, we're beginning to consider the process of naming the schools, as well as selecting a mascot and colors for the high school. Um, architects have told us that it would be beneficial, and they, they may speak to that later, for the board to select colors and a mascot for the high school in the next few months. Um, so having that information will become important as the design process proceeds. <laughs> so your antennas should be going yeah, up on that one. That's, that's going to be an interesting process with a lot of input from our community. We need input. Okay, and then finally, um, we're also thinking about processes and timelines for attendance boundaries planning. Uh, we'd like to have those decisions made by January of 2019 so that students entering the ninth grade in the fall of 2019 will know which high school that they will attend um, when they register for high school um, as a freshman, even though they'll be at the nine. Our goal is to have them know before they enter the ninth grade before pre-registration. Um, and remember, we, um, I think you're probably all familiar with our plan to open the school with ninth and 10th graders, so that's why that timeline is important. Middle school students will need boundary information for pre-registration in the spring of 2020, 
elementary students will need boundary information for pre-registration in the spring of 2019. Um, and we may opt to do all of that planning at one time and make that announcement together, but we'll outline that, outline that process and come back to you to, to discuss. So um, as we approach the work, we're going to look to you for your guidance and your input. And of course, we'll keep you informed all along the way through the process. Uh, a lot of work ahead, obviously, um, but I, I, I don't want to get past this point without our, our, uh, our saying thank you to you. You spent a, a lot of time doing a lot of presentations, community presentations, went to every school, PTA meetings, evening events, um, or, community organizations everywhere who would, would welcome you in. You did a presentation just to spread the word and get the information out. Thank you for your leadership in that and in your willingness to do all that extra legwork to, to accomplish our goal of getting information into the hands of our voters so that they can make an informed decision. Um, I think we did a, a good job. Um, there are those who say they didn't hear. I, I don't know how we can do more pushing information out. Everything from you're doing a presentation at a PTA meeting to doing a Facebook Live <laughs> event, which was a first for us, using technology, a variety of methods to push information out. Certainly our local media, uh, the Telegram and, and Belt and Journal, did uh, helped us um, share information also. But um, again, I want to just say thank you to you on behalf of the board for your Pleasure. efforts thank to you uh, communicate much. and communicate and communicate and get the word out so that people could make an informed decision. So thank you for that. Thank you, we enjoyed you, it. You wanna add on I that? I do, and let's not forget all that door-to-door -door thing that you did. <laughs> thank you for that. You're you welcome. and Randy, <laughs> appreciate you guys for doing that. Thank you. Well, that's a hard work though. Yeah, I have to say I'd never done a Facebook Live or a Teletown <laughs> Hall, and I uh, really enjoyed those. So we may find a way to use those um, activities again in the future for some other input or just to push out information. Maybe a good way to, to you know, we're looking community. at some things we're going to need as yeah. much community input as we can, as you talked about. Yeah. Naming and and attendance zones and, and all that. Uh, gonna, but what we have done in the past successfully is get input. And, and I've said this several times, and I want to say it again. The election took a lot of people to, to participate, but the process to get to the election took a lot of people over years of participating. And so again, thank you for the coordination of that. Uh, Kyle, thank you for your work in helping facilitate some of that communication process and, and helping us get to that point. The Roadmap to 2025 was a plan that was endorsed by our community uh, because it was created by our community. Thank you. And I want to thank my entire team. Yep. We, um, this, te this leadership team spent four years working towards this and we, um, we put a lot of presentations together, had a lot of discussion and, and really um, our goal was to respond uh, to the questions that were asked. And so I appreciate this team very much. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you all. We appreciate your work. Okay, finally, um, our legislative update. We're continuing to monitor bills that um, are impacting us during this session. Um, and I wanna once again express appreciation to Representative Hugh Shine. Um, he's done something that we've never seen done before in his weekly teleconference calls with superintendents in the area. And he's shared information and asked lots of questions. Um, and responded to our questions. So we're very appreciative of his efforts to keep us informed. And he has um, taken our feedback back to the floor and uh, talked to folks that were important in the decision-making process. And so we appreciate Representative Sean. Um, there are many bills that could impact us from this session. Um, however, uh, one that we're continuing to watch is House Bill 21. That's the, the bill that increases funding for public schools. It's the basis of next year's budget projections and planning that we'll, Deanna Clavel will discuss with you in a few minutes. Um, last week, Chairman of the Senate Education Committee, Larry Taylor, introduced a version of House Bill 21 which includes education savings grants for special education students who have a disability under IDEA and or Section 504. Um, and those grants would allow families to use state money that, that would have gone to public schools to send their special needs students to private schools. And that revised bill has now been sent to the full Senate. Senate. And as you know, we're not in favor 
of using uh, public funds for privatization, and it's believed that House members are not likely to approve any bill that includes private um, school tuition subsidies or vouchers. Um, so that leaves us with a lot of uncertainty um, about school funding for next year and any pending legislative actions um, could delay some of our um, key decisions that we need to make over the next couple of months, including um, salary increases that we are normally talking about at this time of the year. So um, Deanna is going to provide you with an update in a few minutes. And Todd Schiller um, will come back next month and review compensation plans scenarios with you, um, which is slightly later than we do that. Um, but we don't have a lot of information from this legislature. It'd all be pretty yet. hypothetical at this point, wouldn't pretty it? Pretty hypothetical, and um, and our you know our plans are dependent on um, those legislative decisions regarding funding. So that's all I have. A couple things I just want to mention: um, Hugh Shine is also doing his just updates weekly where he goes around and, and I wanted to give a, a kudos to Phil Haggerty. He mentioned Phil, I've already told him this, but at in addition to his weekly conference calls uh, with the superintendents, he's using and, and communicating with our business office staff and communicating regularly. And, and at last week's meeting, last week, he specifically pointed out that Phil helped provide some information that was able to impact statewide law and um, gave a lot of credit to Phil and his his expertise in that. And, and I, that's a real credit, obviously, to Hugh and his willingness, Representative Shine, and his willingness to, to get feedback, but to our staff and credibility and, and being able to provide that information. So thank you, Phil, for doing Thank you, Susan, for doing you. He uh, really, providing that um, information. He really has demonstrated that he um, he wants the information from us to make decisions. He wants to represent us and he wants he really good does. information and he wants to make decisions based on fact. And, and that's, it's very encouraging to have a House representative who will do that um, because the Senate is not representing public education very well. He's been very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. I have a quick question. You got a question? Yep. Uh, back on the graduation activities, uh -huh. are seniors still doing a splash day, or are we not doing that based on last year's um, tragedy? We are doing a splash day. We okay. we have some new um, processes in place, but we do ha we are having splash. Can you tell me what those processes are? Um, I couldn't off the top of my head, but Tom can. Okay. Yep. We've met with staff to talk about that. worked with uh, Dr. Dubois and we came up with new procedures. Actually, we enhanced some procedures. Uh, one of those is that all parents in the past have given notice, uh, you know, written notice, but what they're doing is staff are verifying with each, with the parent of record by phone call. And then those are being documented. The other thing we're doing differently is that when they take role at the facility, anyone missing will immediately, the school will be called, they'll call back to the campus There'll be a bank of people there to call to let, you know, I'll pick on Ty, to let Ty know that, that your child's missing, you know. I got my phone call today. Yes, so we have put a lot of things in place to try to make sure that it, it is a, a very safe environment and it will be, a, I think, a really good environment. But we, we've Thank worked, you. and I want to give Dr. Dubois, he's ill tonight or else he'd be here, but uh, he's not feeling really well. But he said that he really has worked to improve to help strengthen this. Can't guarantee that kids will always do what they're told to do, but we can at least monitor them exactly. and be where they're, so that if they're not where they're supposed to be, we know that. So. Exactly. Thank you. Good deal. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Appreciate that. You want to move, uh, move on into um, human resources, employment? Sure, I'll start while Todd's coming up, and I want to um, talk a little bit about Belton High School. Um, and just say that we're, we're going to make some changes for next year in order to meet the needs of Belton High School, which has been growing and will continue to grow over the next three years before we open our second comprehensive high school. Um, we'd like to provide some additional administrative and instructional leadership there. Um, Dr. Dubois gave us notice last month of his planned retirement at the end of next school year, and that gives, uh, allows us the opportunity um, to address the needs of Belton High School and plan for the future. 
Um, it's going to allow us for an extended transition. It will provide greater continuity um, for our staff and our students. And um, therefore, we're planning to shift uh, and uh, transfer Jill Ross, a principal of Belton New Tech High School at Wasco, um, who has worked closely with Belton High School and Dr. Dubois for several years um, to be the co-principal at Belton High School for next year. Um, Jill has a Master's of Education in Special Education, a Bachelor of Arts in English, and 20 years of experience, 13 of which are in Belton ISD. And she has extensive experience um, as a teacher, a diagnostician, an assistant principal, director of federal programs, director of special education, which is one of the hardest jobs, I think, in the district, um, and has been our principal, very successful principal at Belton New Tech High School at Wasco. And so we're um, very pleased um, for, that Jill will take this on for next year and help us um, as we continue to grow. Great. Jill, you want to, why don't you stand up and family, Claude and Addie are, are here, make y'all stand up too. Come on, you should, because it's a family thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, this is not board action because it's an administrative transfer and, and uh, moving assignments basically for a principal, but um, Jill has certainly distinguished herself as a leader in our district for many, many years at, at a variety of positions. Um, and so this is a good natural step for her in continuing that leadership and continuing her opportunities to excel and help our students excel. Thank you for taking on new challenges. I know there's some mixed feelings about this because you have to give up some to gain some other opportunities, but we thank you for your willingness to do that, Jill. All right, okay. that's all I have. Thank you. <coughs> I would like to introduce to y'all Christina Flores. Christina, stand up. Christina is, has been offered and accepted our Advanced Academic Services Coordinator yeah. position. She has a Bachelor's of Science degree in Mathematics from Texas State University in San Marcos, a Master's of Education degree from University of Texas at Arlington. <clears throat> and she has 11, in her 11th year in education and has served as an Assistant Principal, Professional Development Coordinator, Instructional Coach, and a Math Teacher. So we're excited to, to see her and uh, welcome her. Great, welcome to Belton. We're excited to see what you bring to us, help our students ex excel. We're looking for um, obviously advanced academic success. And so you have, uh, you have those opportunities to work with our curriculum staff and, and do great things. So we look forward to what you bring to us, uh, to our district. Welcome to Belton. We have uh, 12 other recommendations as a part of your packet tonight. Um, we have uh, two former employees um, that we're rehiring back. It's huh. uh, Allison Cope. Um, she was here before in 13-14 as a geometry teacher for us at the high school, taught IP geometry as well. Um, he helped us get Brian, actually, as I recall. That is, <laughs> She said, we need to go to Belton. Right. And then Rebecca Levine, who was a former aide for us um, in 2014-2015 at Southwest Elementary. Wonderful. Her as a teacher. Right? Wonderful. <laughs> Always good to see people come back. That's and then we have two former Belton High School graduates. All right. Us in the Grow our own. Um, Megan Moore and Lacey Wilson. Megan Moore's class of 2010 and Lacey Wilson is class of 2007. So. That's wonderful. Well, that's great. So open positions have, for next year? We have 30 open positions for next year at this time. Continuing to recruit for and screen? Good. Great. I bet you have lots and lots of applicants, don't you, Wade? <coughs> wonderful. Okay. So motion to approve. A motion from Ms. Jordan, second from Mr. Camden. Any other comments or questions? All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Thank you very much. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate your work uh, again to honor our staff uh, with service awards and recognitions. Um, and and want to give a little shout out. Calvin Itz will be doing some more uh, Big Red Heart Awards this week. So what a great program, a way to honor our staff. Great opportunity. All right, Deanna, you're going to talk to us about community and student engagement ratings. I am. Um, so tonight we wanted to just update you on our student and community engagement ratings. So this is a process that has been in place since 2014, and it was designed for schools to and districts to evaluate themselves 
on the eight areas that are um, in your packet and on the board in the board um, community parent involvement fine arts wellness and PE 21st century skills second language acquisition digital learning dropout prevention and gifted and talented the way this was designed is that each district would develop the criteria in which they would rate themselves and then they would rate themselves and so there is not a standard standardized criteria among the state um, in terms of the criteria used to rate nor in how you rate um, with the passing of House Bill 2804 this has now been added to the state accountability system so under the education code Beginning in June, um, each district and campus will choose three components out of the eight to um, rate themselves on, and then they will submit those ratings in June of 2018, and those will be a part of the A through F system. So what started off as um, a way for districts to look, um, you could either choose to, to rate, you choose how to rate yourself. So you could just go in with, we're doing great in everything. You could decide to use a growth mindset model. Um, that was up to you um, as a district and a campus. And now that will be a part of our A through F system. So um, we take it very seriously. We've done um, a very thorough job, I think, um, especially when you talk uh, with others around the state and how we have rated ourselves and how each campus has rated them. And so you can see in front of you the ratings for each of the areas by campus and then by the district. You can see how the district compared this year from the previous year. And then you'll see asterisks. And those asterisks indicate the areas that will be submitted for rating for the A through F system. So what will happen, for instance, is the district is going to it has decided that fine arts, 21st century workforce development, and digital learning will be the three areas that we will be held accountable for. And then in June of 2018, we will submit our ratings for next year for that A through F system. Um, so we've encouraged our, our campuses to think about um, all of the ways that we are doing, um, how we're really doing well, especially um, in the areas that they're choosing to hold themselves accountable for their, for their rating. That, <laughs> any questions on that? It's a new system. Um, it's called the um, it's case accountability system now for, for school districts. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And, and I've said this in the past when we've had these, board gets to have no input in this process. But I, but I understand that it's about site-based and, and all that. I, I wish we got to have some input. We basically approve what they are mandated to do. So I um, understand the system is designed as it is. I just wish we got to have some input. So I'll say that again. Uh, but I'm glad that our site-based committees are involved, that we are engaging the, the people who are on the campuses making those decisions. They are. They've developed a rubric for which they follow. Um, and what we've really encouraged them is to think about um, the opportunities Belton ISD provides students compared to any, any school in the state. Because sure. um, we will always find in Belton ways that we can improve. Um, but but the ways that we identify to improve and how we rate ourselves currently does not necessarily need to be one and the same. Right, right. So, so it's going to be different. And, and I like that, that it can be different for different campuses. It can be I different for every campus. So you set a different priority goal? We That's correct. And some of them, um, some of the criteria do lean themselves more to secondary than, than some of the others. And so um, it really does allow campuses to think about what they're focusing on. Those will be um, emphasized in their campus plan and our district plan, and then we'll submit those ratings next year. Okay, good deal. Go okay with that? Motion to approve. Recommendations? Mr. Cowan? Motion, Mr. Cowan, second. Mr. Norwood? Sorry, Jan, I just missed you. Um, <laughs> have a motion and a second. Any other comments, questions? All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. Yes, stands. Thank you, thank you, and please pass on our thanks to those involved. DWIC does a lot of work, and we know DWIC those are those are people who are volunteering uh, their work. And Charlotte, we appreciate everybody yeah. their work on that. Please, please pass along our thanks to them. So, okay, all right, Deanna Clavel, you are here to talk about a budget update, aren't you? <laughs> now, Dr. Kincannon just told us you have nothing to build on because we're waiting on the legislature. <laughs> But we, but, but we know, I, I exaggerate, obviously we have building blocks and things that are carried on 
So there's some question marks, obviously, still in this, but yeah, thank you. There are for definitely still some question marks, but we have some information to start really thinking about the 17, 18 years it comes. So we'll take a few minutes to talk about some of those building blocks and some of those things that we're taking into consideration uh, for the 17, 18 year. Uh, so the budget, the budget is something that we work on all year long. It's not something we do just in a few months um, each year, but it's really something we work on continuously throughout the year. Um, it really picks up its pace once we've completed the prior year's audit. Um, then it really kind of picks up and we start working with all of our stakeholders and our budget owners. We provide them with a three-year spending history for them to review along with some instructions that helps them start to develop the 17-18 year and the next year's budget. And we meet with them in January and February to start discussing any concerns that they have and to review those budget proposals and for them to bring anything to us that they have that they would like us to consider to go into the next year's budget. The budget is really, it's a plan. Um, it's kind of a, what, what we're thinking about for the next year. Uh, it's based on, this early in the process, it's based on a lot of unknowns and some information that we don't have in whole yet. Um, but we do have um, some information that we take into consideration. And so some of those things that we look at as we start to develop the budget are, are our priorities in the district. All of these priorities are identified in the district improvement plan. Um, and all things that, that follow in line with that. Some of those are to support academic achievement, uh, support the district's digital learning initiatives. So we do have, we are working on the one-to-one -one initiative. We want to support that as we continue to grow. Uh, we want to maintain comparable salary and benefits packages for our employees so that we can maintain the best employees here. Uh, and to provide staffing and facilities to meet the needs of growth. We talked about the bond earlier today. And so we have to continue to maintain our current facilities and think about the growth in our students and what we need for staffing as we move into the future. And we always want to maintain our existing facilities, like I said. So this is where we start. Then we start thinking about taking some assumptions and some considerations into play as we work through the next process of the budget. Um, and one of the key building blocks that we need in order to build a budget is we have to know how many students we're going to have in order for us to know how many teachers we need, in order for us to know how much resource we need to support those students. So Templeton Demographics studies that for us, and we work closely with them. Um, and they have told us through their study to anticipate having 11,382 students next year. With that being said, state funding is based on a different number. And so it's not based on the number of kids that we have. It's based on our ADA, the average daily attendance throughout the entire school year. Well, so let me just pause there a moment. Sure. That's a really ridiculous notion. <laughs> it, just think about that. <laughs> If two kids are absent in a classroom, the teacher doesn't get paid less, the electricity doesn't cost less, nothing costs less, but that is the way the state does it for everybody and always has, but it's absurd. Okay. That's all. <laughs> Rant over. <laughs> we, we've also taken a look at, uh, at the beginning of the legislative session, the House and the Senate uh, submitted and put out a proposed budget that they had initially. And in that, they both included an increase to the Austin yield as part of the state funding formula to increase that, which would allow us to receive some additional funding through the state to support our students in the coming years. Um, we also recently met with the tax appraisal district and received our preliminary assessed values. Those came in at $2.9 billion. Um, and so now we have some information to build our M&O tax collections off of and our debt tax collections off of by using that information from them. And we have to take into consideration the new positions that we're going to need to support student growth at 11,382 students is up from the previous year. And so we'll definitely need some new staffing uh, to take into consideration as well. And then we have some considerations that we start looking at. Um, salary increases, like as Dr. Kincannon mentioned earlier, um, there's some different levels of salary increases that I've provided here for you to review and the impact on the budget that that would have if, if those were approved and what that cost is to us. Um, in the last few years, we've talked about health contributions um, and the district's portion of that that we uh, provide to our staff members to help offset that cost. Uh, currently, we pr provide $350 per person per month to support health contributions. Um, and we're looking at potentially, at a later time, um, increasing that. And this is what that impact would be to us if, if that is something we move forward with. So, and, and to remind everybody, and especially for our newer board members, um, one of the things that we've debate, we talk about is do we 
give money all in salary increase or do we put part of that available money into health contribu health insurance contribution increase? Uh, we've the last couple of years split it and, and done both, been able to do both. That's that's one of the discussions we have to do and we work with human resources in terms of what helps us with recruitment and retention. What are the things that we need to do? And so both of those are really important factors in building our budget and our human resources, equipping our human resources department for recruitment and retention. So. And as we get closer to that point, we'll bring some information for consideration. Right. And so survey uh, oh. comparisons, survey other districts and what, what the competitive, mar what the market uh, demands, certainly. We'll bring that to you next month. Um, obviously, the legislator legislature's decisions about school funding are going to impact what we can do this year. So right. we're, we're really in a holding pattern waiting to see what happens with that. But that is a decision point that will give some guidance as a board uh, yep. based on the feedback or, or information that we're given. So I mentioned we met with the tax appraisal district and based on that $2.94 billion that we have received as the preliminary assessed values and the appraisal district has informed us that that is a very conservative guess on their point. Um, and that will, that if we were to receive that, if that were to be our certified values, we would receive $32 million in MO tax collections to support the upcoming year. Really significant, particularly because our bond planning was predicated on a much lower growth rate than that. So mm -hmm. that's good news. It is As we know, that's why we needed new more schools. We are growing. And so those are significant. It is, it is good news. And we're maintaining healthy growth as compared to some of our, our neighboring um, communities. And our, our growth is very healthy. Absolutely. So with some of those, those assumptions taken into consideration, our, our enrollment and, and ADA for the upcoming school year, we're able to put together some very preliminary revenue figures for you to review at this time. Um, and our revenue for next year, based on what we have available to us today, um, is about $95 million, which is about a 2% increase from the previous year. Um, and that's based on 11,382 students in enrollment and 10,643 ADA, which is how we'd be funded through the state. Um, we've also taken into consideration the Austin yield increase that I mentioned because we feel very confident that that, that portion of it will pass because it is in both the House and the Senate's proposed budgets at this time. We've talked a lot. We've heard the legislature talked about legislative information. There are two bills in the legislature right now that have a significant, not a significant, but they do have an impact on school finance funding. Uh, one of those bills that we've heard a lot about is House Bill 21. Um, in House Bill 21, they've proposed an increase in the basic allotment from $5,140 per ADA to $5,350. Um, in doing that, they have also repealed some special allotments that we were receiving um, in their attempt to try to increase the basic allotment. And, and those are the transportation allotment, high school allotment, um, the staff salary allotment as well was another one that they have in there as repealed. Um, they have added an additional weight in their proposal for dyslexia. This is something we were not receiving previously, so this would be a new element to the funding. Um, and they would provide us with a weight of 0 0.10 per FTE uh, of student for dyslexia. And I don't have a way to specifically identify what that is, but I, I do know that we had 343 students identified in dyslexia in the current school year. Um, and that is capped at no more than 5% of your enrollment um, if it were to be part of the final bill. Um, there's an increase for bilingual. Uh, that weight would go from 0.1 to 0.11. Um, that would generate an additional 20, approximately an additional $20,000 to Belton ISD to support our bilingual program. Mm. There are some additional items that, uh, as it's kind of moved from the House to the Senate, there's some additional uh, amendments that were included in there. Uh, some of those are that CTE is proposed to be expanded to support 8th through 12th grade um, and not just 9th through 12th grade. Um, and the NEFA funding, which is something we have not talked about yet, but to go from $250 per ADA to $1,000 as part of the ne proposal. NEFA, New Instructional Facilities Allotment. Correct. <coughs> that is significant for us as we look towards building some new schools. Yep. The House Bill 21, as it's proposed right now, 
um, the impact to Belton ISD would be an additional million dollars in state funding to support the 17-18 school year. Senate Bill 2145 is another bill we've seen, we've heard a lot about. Um, Senate Bill 2145 is really de designed to create a more easily understood and explainable system for school finance, fund, uh, for the funding formulas. Um, and what it does is it takes everything down to the bare basics. Um, it starts with just the regular program allotment, a special education, CTE, bilingual, comp ed, um, and transportation allotments. They've not provided any details in this bill to allow us to analyze what type of impact that would have for us. They have not, and they have not identified what the program allotment would be, the dollars associated with that per ADA so that we can evaluate that. But it is something being evaluated. Um, and as they move forward, we, we look forward to seeing what they, what they decide to do in, during the legislative session with those. Some other items that we have for consideration in the 1718 um, school year budget are some technology to support digital learning. As we maintain our technology um, infrastructures, we support one-to-one -one initiatives and the increased demand in technology. These are some of the significant items that technology has identified um, as potentially needing to be completed in the upcoming year uh, um, in some costs identified with those as we move forward. Um, and so those are just a lot of upgrades to our infrastructure to maintain it. Um, it's uh, in uh, our computer lab replacement cycle. Last year we did a student and teacher devices and designed a replacement cycle to keep all of those up to date so that we um, always provide the best and most up to date technology for them. Um, then we've also identified a life cycle replacement for the computer labs at all of our campuses so that we can be sure that they stay up to date as well. Some capital items that have been uh, presented to us to consider for the 17-18 year, uh, and all of these items are to maintain our existing facilities. So none of these items are to support a new facility, but to keep what we have up to date. Um, those items are the Belton High School Roof Project C, the Belton High School Furniture Replacement Cycle, which we're researching at this time, um, looking into that. Heating and cooling units across the district at all of our locations, automated logic controls, and that would provide heat and air efficiency uh, through a program that we would be able to use. Tile and flooring across the district. Um, and these are just some of the, the large items that, they, that were on the list, but all of the items that were turned in for us to consider, um, excluding the BHS Roof C project and the furniture replacement cycle uh, was approximately $800,000 for the 17-18 school year. So some important dates coming up as we move forward towards a proposed budget. Uh, we'll bring to you in June a second update on the budget. The legislative session will have uh, come to an end and we should have some additional information to uh, fine tune the budget for you. And we'll also talk about um, some additional capital projects a little bit more in detail and identify what those will be and review our debt tax rate. Uh, we'll come back and visit you in July uh, to review the proposed budget, to review truth and taxation requirements. We'll look at our child nutrition fund and our debt service fund at that time. Um, and in July, we may have our certified values uh, as well from the tax appraisal district. We anticipate receiving those mid to late July. Um, in the past, we have been able to receive them prior to the board meeting, so I anticipate doing so as well this year. Uh, then in August, we will bring to you a balanced budget for, uh, for review and adoption and a tax rate to support those budgets for the upcoming year. And that's all I have for you this evening on the budget update. Any, any questions or any information? Well, lots of questions, but of course, we're waiting on the <laughs> legislature to answer them, right? <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions on, on budget and status? This is the every other year it's it's easier, we can do this a little more ahead of time because the legislature's not in session, but in odd years, we get to wait on some of those things. So, Thank you, good, no good problem. information. No problem, thank you very much. Appreciate that, thank you, Phil, for your work and your uh, your whole team's work in uh, in preparing this budget and, and getting us getting us ready. Um, great, okay, Dr. Kincanny, we uh, authorized you last month to negotiate a contract with Bartlett Cock for the construction of our comprehensive high school 
if the bond issue passed. The bond yes. issue passed, so... You did, and we have negotiated a contract um, which ended up very close to, the, to what was published in our RFP. Um, so tonight we have the contract to present to you for your approval, and that's for CMAR, CMAR services for comprehensive high school number two. Um, as listed in your packet, there's some, some detail there on the percent of the cost of the work and our pre-construction services fee. Um, of course, we don't know the, the GMP yet on the project, and so um, that will be determined, determined as we continue to, to move forward. And so tonight, we're just asking for approval of the contract. Again, I wanna say thank you to you and Angela, working very hard on this contract, and, and uh, certainly to our our new friends from Bartlett Cock who are and, uh, ready to work with us. Kevin Bird and Mark Kibner are with us this Great. evening. Great. We yeah. appreciate y'all working with us and uh, uh, and and listening to Angela <laughs> 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 and taking our uh, expectations at, as okay. okay. <laughs> so uh, we have a an advocate working on our behalf in Angela. So. We have a recommendation to approve this contract again. I want to be clear. Last month, we merely approved the negotiation of a contract. We did not approve contract. It's contrary to what some folks believed. So this month, we are approving the contract. So is there a motion to approve contract? I have a motion from Mr. Norwood, second from Mr. Camden. Any other questions or comments? All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. Passes unanimously. Ready to get to work, guys? All right, good deal. Well, that's a good segue to Jared. Come talk to us, man. We're going to talk about elementary school first, but then we'll we'll talk about. Uh, is that right? What are we doing? We're doing elementary school. Only. That's what we're talking about tonight. We're not going to talk about the high school and high school. So you'll do elementary first, and then the high school. I said that right. First time. Confused myself. I'm sorry. You're good. Welcome. Well, thank you for having us here again tonight, and congratulations. You're, you're a regular and will be a regular, won't you? Uh, for a little while, so <laughs> few years left to go. Uh, so tonight, uh, I'm here to uh, give you an update of the elementary school and the high school project, uh, and we'll take kind of one by one and answer any questions along the way. Uh, so for the, the new board members, for, for Ms. Lee and Mr. Taggett, should you have any questions, please, please feel free to jump in. You're kind of hitting the the end of the schematic design process, uh, which is kind of that first formulation of what are we building, what does it look like, those kind of questions along the way. Uh, and so we've been coming to the board now for two months on the elementary school. Uh, so this is the third month on the elementary school and represents the end of our schematic design phase. Uh, so you do have a book in front of you that documents all the decisions to date and all the information that we're going to be presenting here tonight. Uh, it's a nice uh, 70 pages, 80 pages or so. Uh, so, Jared, I, I just want to add a, a special thank you. We swore in new board members an hour, a little over an hour ago, and you've already got them listed. That that's impressive. Out off the press. This is that's that's well well done. Thank you. As everything you do is high quality, so thank, thank you, you much. for that. Uh, so tonight, uh, and, and I uh, just kind of want to go back to the architectural process uh, before we jump into the engineering process. Uh, we talked about the site development plan. Uh, this is the Poison Oak site uh, located in Temple. Uh, and we're starting to engage our, our engineers uh, from civil all the way through mechanical electrical plumbing and talking and, and starting to really dive deep into the site design and site elements to be able to support the design. Uh, site plans remained unchanged uh, at this point, but we do have the geotechnical engineering report, we have the, the survey, and we're starting to integrate those in with our civil engineer and starting to look at the topography and grading and those type of elements as we move forward on the site design. Okay, so last month you said something about changing the, the stack space, pulling it out more to a 90 degree to, to gain some stack space, but that didn't change on here, right? Correct, we, we've not updated the, the this is a uh, drawing file. Uh, I understand, JPEG, but we've, we've updated okay. in the background on our So screen. one of the questions I haven't ever asked and just clarity, where's the where's the water go? Where's the reten detention pond? Where, don't we have to build one of those? We usually have one some camp on every campus. Where's so, that going? Uh, right now, and you're, you're skipping ahead to this. Oh, okay, if you wanna wait, that's fine. I'm just looking at the site plan. Uh, so it's City of Temple has a unified development agreement and we have to comply with certain requirements right. within there. 
Uh, and so they have multiple options. We have to complete three of them or get three points, and there's multiple ways to get that from your landscaping to creating a detention pond or a water quality pond. Uh, so we're talking about what those options are and what work best and probably is most economical from a first cost and long-term cost for the district. Uh, right now, what we had envisioned was the high point of the site is at the north uh, west corner of the site. Uh, and so somewhere probably here along the, uh, the lowest point of the site is where we would look at having some sort of detention or retention pond uh, in that area. Goal would be to make it very low impact uh, from a visual standpoint. Okay, I don't. I may be jumping ahead again. Where, where's the fencing? What, what kind of fencing are we proposing on this site? I haven't. Uh, so, so we we've questioned. not talked about uh, fencing just yet in, in that much uh, detail. Uh, generally, we see usually the playground area is fenced uh, to be able to create that barrier between the public and private, and you kind of get. Sure. Uh, if you talk to the teachers, they talk about runners. Exactly. Uh, you want to try to corral those kids as much as you can. Uh, but, but well, chasing a ball or something, exactly. obviously, you don't want that. So, but where is that? So where, where would that might be? So right now, what we would look at... By the way, I'm going to ask you to do this twice, once for us on this screen and once for sure. everybody else on the other screen. So, if you so can, what we're there. looking at doing is we'd install a automotive gate <coughs> here uh, and potentially one here and as well as here. Uh, but we'd look at creating the fencing around the playground area, which is back here at the back. There's a lot of discussion about using this fire access loop as a playscape. Uh, okay. So for those in the public, Chism. yep, that would be an automotive gate here, one here and here, and then this is the playground area, and then this is the fire loop that we'd look at using it as kind of double using this playscape area, basketball goal. Basically on the west and north sides, but not the whole all of it uh, that hasn't been discussed and, and we'll have to look okay. at adjacent uses and zoning whether or not those are required by code okay. or not right okay that helps me who was asked that question and I didn't know the answer yep. so a lot a lot of questions to be answered yeah so. it's still I understand we're early in that process but that that'll help so then from a, a floor plan standpoint, we went through the design process. We've continued to have meetings with the district and the staff and, and continue to kind of massage those things around. We got buy-off from everybody last week uh, in terms of locations of special education and the overall intent of the floor plan. Uh, and then we presented the exterior design uh, last month, and that really kind of wrapped up the architectural portion of the package. Uh, and then in the background, Parallel with that, we've been working on the schematic design deliverable, and that's really this book here that you have. Uh, and we describe all of the architectural process in this book, uh, roughly from page uh, about three or four through about page 23, talks about the architecture of the building, uh, about how it's used, even gets into the code of the building, you know, how we're going to use firewalls to be able to comply with the International Building Code, those type of elements. And then from page 25 uh, until uh, about 50 is all of the information regard the, regarding the civil or the engineering systems that will support uh, that building. And I've, I've summarized those 20 to 30 pages in, in the text you hear, see here on the screen of kind of the high level things. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to read all of it, but uh, from the civil engineering side, we are looking at uh, complying with the city of Temple water and waste, uh, city of Temple codes. Uh, installing uh, best management practice for stormwater, water, wastewater, uh, landscape, landscaping. We will have to comply with the uniform development code for that. Uh, there are options, again, that we want to balance the, the district's desire for maintainability, which is usually trees over shrubs, uh, but we still want to make it a, a, a nice place to be when you approach the building. Uh, structural engineering, we are looking at a slab on grade with drilled piers. The soils are actually pretty good. Uh, right now, the geotechnical engineer's recommendation is two feet of select fill. Uh, and if you recall, for just as an example, the track and field at Belton High School Stadium, we did three feet of select fill and eight feet of chemical injection. So it was about 11 feet of addressing soils. Here, we're doing two feet. So huge difference. Huge in, difference. Yes, in, in that side. Significant. Yes, significant. Uh, so then from the structural engineering side, we're looking uh, for the superstructure. We're looking at a structural steel frame with metal stud backup, masonry veneer, uh, which is very common practice uh, here in, in Central Texas. Uh, interiors, uh, we're really looking at uh, 
floor and wall finishes probably match a lot with what the district already has in terms of colors and shapes or colors and finishes. Uh, but we will be talking uh, here pretty quick about other options for long-term maintenance, uh, meaning non-waxing floors. Uh, so that may be a rubber tile, linoleum tower, maybe even sealed concrete uh, along the way that fits overall into the design of, you know, not- Our board just gained a flooring expert, by the way. So okay. might have some input there. Perfect. <laughs> So we'll, we'll get into all, all those discussions here soon uh, from that side. Uh, MEP engineering, uh, so that we'll, we'll have water that, that works in the fixtures and runs them away as well. Uh, you turn on the light, uh, it'll turn on and off. We are looking for a full LED system uh, throughout the campus, both interior and exterior. We see that the price point is relatively right. negligible. Long-term benefit is there. Uh, and then one change is uh, on the mechanical system, uh, the three pro previous schools uh, worked on a large package DX system that was a single zone for a classroom wing. And we're looking at moving towards package DX that are smaller, usually around five to seven tons that it's one per classroom. Uh, that was a lot of discussion with the, the district maintenance mm. and operation staff that became uh, a little bit easier to maintain. Uh, if the unit goes down, you don't lose an entire classroom wing, and then teachers will be happy because they get a thermostat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly, technology systems. Uh, we had a, a good long meeting about technology, about where we're at and where it's headed. Uh, we are looking at providing uh, a full comprehensive technology package within the construction costs of the project. So that means putting uh, network switches, cabling, phones, those kind of things throughout the, the building as part of the contract. So that way it's kind of turnkey. Uh, as you might say on that one. So. I'm, I'm going to be real curious to see the price comparison of what you just described on the HVAC. HVAC? Yeah, how that works. Sure. Instead of wings or individual instead of wings. That's, so, that's just an interesting, both uh, initial costs and maintenance and sure. ongoing. Uh, but not not tonight necessarily. I'm just telling you going forward, that that's an interesting thought process. change. Sure. It, It'll be uh, easier to maintain from a filter standpoint. Uh, you'll have more okay. filters, but they'll be smaller. Uh, you will have large packets outside air units that are required as part of the International Energy Conservation Code, IECC. Uh, so you'll start seeing those things okay. pop up as well. Okay, interesting. Again, basically what we're talking about though is building a school that for us walking in will look very similar to the last three we've built. That is correct. So a few tweaks here. And yeah, there. but but yeah, very um, similar. Yes. Overall, same look and feel. Those have served us well, been well received by our staff and teachers and students and families. Absolutely. Uh, so then the last part, and as you look in the packet, there is a, uh, a detail of this budget, same information that's between the two that's on page 53. Uh, but really the, the point here is, is that we're still at the same bottom line number, the 21.3 million roughly. Uh, but there was some adjustment as we went through uh, and talked about, for example, the fifth grade classrooms or some of the common room spaces. We increased the total square footage of the building by a thousand square feet. Uh, so there was a slight adjustment in the hard cost uh, that we pulled from the project contingency. Uh, but overall, again, we expect this to be fully within budget uh, with very favorable things like the soil. We may be able to realize some savings here. So that's the elementary school in a nutshell. So tonight we will be looking for approval of the schematic design package, which represents the, the book that you have in front of you, uh, but then the, all the information that was covered in very succinctly tonight. <coughs> Any questions on that one before we Wait a minute. That, move over to the go back, go the back to the it, can I, can I Absolutely. The way I understand it, when we approve this schematic tonight, that kind of sets in motion what the city of Temple is going to be doing as far as our Poison Oak Road goes, maybe to move that up the list. Is that how that works as our priority? Well, right it, through the initial discussions, when the it, my understanding is when the board selected the Poison Oak site, which would have been in January, that kind of really kind of kicked them into moving forward with that. Uh, I don't believe there's an official action in moving it forward, but they said they know that there's interest in moving it forward to make it happen. Formally, what I've been told, they were waiting to see if it would pass, <laughs> and they're taking they're working pretty hard this week. So that's informal, obviously, they haven't taken any formal action, but I think you, in your notes, you've got some notes that they 
it was in their plan to be finished at a certain time with the expectation of even speeding that up uh, with this. But that's what they've said. We had a councilman present, but I didn't want to put him on the spot tonight. So uh, can you back up a slide? Because I'm, I'm a little bit, maybe I got the wrong, looking at a different, the, that. Is that different than what we have on page 49? No, it's the uh, same thing. So th this is the updated cost. And it doesn't have the inflation contingency in it. Oh, you know what? It does not. It's missing that one. That's that's right. that's an incomplete chart, right? Yes, it's missing one line in there. But it is. Gotcha. But we have the full, we have it all here. We have it all. Okay. That's what I wanted. Because that inflation contingency is really important because costs, my understanding is construction costs are they speak to that. They're yeah. going up pretty they're going rapidly. Up, they've right already gone year. up thirty percent, and they're going up. It looks like again in August. So thirty. Uh, lumber's gone up thirty percent. Okay. Yeah. Since when? Since What's uh, the time? How fast? A month ago. Mm, wow. It, it, was, it was an immediate thing. So. Mm. What caused that? Is there some worldwide NAFTA. incident? Uh, yes. NAFTA. We yes. NAFTA. NAFTA. Yes. Okay. Politics at work. Politics. This national politics impacting us locally on what it costs us. Okay. That's a good to know. Luckily, we're not doing stick frame building here. We are not doing stick frame. <laughs> what we worry about is the cost of concrete and steel, right? Yes. So it'll be, it'll be residual. It's going to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be cheaper to build with steel than wood at some point. Is that what you're dealing with? I don't. It, it's, we weigh it out every day. Okay. So um, the, the approval of the schematic design um, document, it, moves us to the next phase of work uh, of our design development documents. So yeah, what, that's the that's the, the trigger for so that. It's not necessarily a trigger for the temp, for the city, but it is in terms of the site planning, because you've been working very closely with them about right. planning um, where we would need curb cuts and things like that. So in the, the big picture, we've got design phase and we have construction phase. And in the design phase, uh, there's schematic design, design development, and contract documents. And at the end of that, that's where we generate the blueprints uh, to go out and bid. Uh, we're set to finish those in October. So this, I look at it as we're starting a wide, broad picture, picture, and we're narrowing in on the final solution. More details. And so this is that first step uh, of three big ones that we move towards to go out to bid. I just want to say I appreciate you going into long-term maintenance. I think that's something that's extremely important. You know, we don't have a ton of money in the school district uh, that's, that gets thrown around very easily. And so um, helping to control those costs in the future is a, is a big thing. Absolutely. Yep. Appreciate that. Ongoing costs. What do you call those first costs? And well, First cost versus long-term cost or life cycle. Really good. Okay. Great. Do you want us to act on this or move on and do your thing? That's up to you. Why don't you go ahead and okay. then we'll... So there's fun yep. fun pictures in here. So yeah. uh, so on the elementary school, we, we looked at the overall architectural concept and we looked at the engineering systems uh, supporting that. Uh, for Comprehensive High School 2, we're going to finish out the architectural portion. So next month, we'll come back with that comprehensive look uh, of all the systems as well. Uh, so for the high school uh, design, uh, with, with tonight's approval uh, of the land, and you'll see that uh, in this diagram at the top right, the red box here on the far left, that's the parcel that, that was discussed last night, which is this one right here, uh, that we've continued to look at the development of that. And as we look at the site plan, uh, that strip of land, you'll see the orientation is slightly different. That's this portion of the site there, which is that portion of the site mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Uh, and really, the, the overall organization uh, hasn't changed from the last time from when we presented this. Uh, and speaking to the point about the land, right now there's opportunities for growth around the athletic stadium, uh, around the building that we're looking at. Uh, but one of the other major factors is if we didn't have that land, everything would be parallel to the property line, uh, which is in a true north-south orientation that, you know, we'd start losing some of those opportunities. Well, we, yeah, you informed us about that previous months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just gives some extra buffer and then squeeze it in quite as tight. So exactly. I think that's a good Good choice, and, and appreciate you helping wor us work through that and what the options were, how we could do it, what it would look like <coughs> one way or the other, but we want to have a, a safe environment for our students. Absolutely. Uh, that meets the long-term needs of that school. 
So then as we start taking a look inside the building to, uh, uh, to orientate the, the new board members, you have Prairie View Road that runs right here and it intersects 317 and then it continues as 2483 here along the, cross, uh, or along the north side. You have High Point Elementary School right here. And so really as we're focused, uh, this was the front door of the facility and the idea was that the, the high, new high school really fronted 2483 and created a presence uh, on the street. Uh, we looked at the new parent drop-off loop here with some auxiliary parking and the idea of maybe a, a special education bus loop that went right into the facility. As you came down, this would be one of the access points. We knew that we needed to maintain it for High Point Elementary School and the continued operation there. But then uh, high school buses would be able to come and loop around and use this bus loop and be able to drop students off into this corridor or corridor, at the, uh, a common space in the outdoor plaza space that was really focused on the library and the core learning areas and really became this uh, nice, uh, exciting area between the buildings. Uh, but then would have two additional entrances here for the student parking, which would also serve as kind of the event parking uh, in the long term. So as you had a, a JV football game here, track and field meet, those type of things, that that would have that opportunity uh, for, from that perspective. And so as we look, what I wanted to really do is focus in here on the front door area here. So then as you look at this map, you see that front door right here within the design. And one of the changes, or I shouldn't say changes, one of the involvements uh, as we've gone through the design is as you look at the grading from this point here to this point here, there's actually 20 feet of fall do that across the, the side. Yep. So, uh, So the front door is right here. So from this point right here to this point over here is about 20 feet of fall across the site. So as we started laying out the building and really looking the details, and so where we always thought that this was a two-story building going up, uh, we're gonna end up having it being a two-story building going down uh, so at that point. In, it, in essence, it's the same thing. It's just um, the elevation will look different. Correct, that, correct, and the approach. So everything will be at ground level. You won't have anything that's not at ground level at this point. So it provides a lot of uh, opportunities and you'll see that here as you look, we have a rendering of the exterior that you'll see that the classroom wings are actually on the ground level. Well, then if you just walk over, you can come out of the front door at ground level, even though it's 15 feet higher uh, between the two. And again, this is looking at how do we balance those first costs and create that best opportunity within the design. We could always fill that area, but it's not very economical from there. Uh, so last time, the, the plan that we y'all looked at was really kind of a hand sketch, talking about overall adjacencies. Uh, we had the opportunity to present that to the project executive group uh, and then be able to then uh, meet with the uh, user group. So we again met uh, over a day and a half, probably about 40 to 50 people within the district and talked about their specific areas within the design uh, and really kind of, again, it began to hone and tweak everything from how do you like the locker rooms and are they laid out correctly and let's reshuffle this. And so we're continuing to reshuffle again uh, here as we move forward within the design. But the overall strategy remains uh, consistent that we have this main street that runs east-west through the main school, which would be here. Uh, you'd have the, the front door uh, with the administration core and a library that then looks over this uh, student commons and eating area. So you have the front door the library, and then the student commons eating area. Down along the west side of the site, you'd have the performing and fine arts area and the athletics area with the main entrance here, performing and fine arts and then athletics main entrance. Uh, and the idea is that, again, that's closest to the student parking. You can come right in. It's also for event parking that you would then walk down to the stadium or come into the gymnasium and the auditorium as well from that design. It's pretty similar to what we're doing now at Belton High School, isn't it? It is. It is very simple. Except that athletics is right in there next to it. So Correct. It's right yeah. out. Yep. Yeah. So everything's all under one roof yeah, little, in this scenario. More compact. So then on the upper floor, uh, we have the core learning areas here uh, that are your English, your math, your foreign language. Uh, we have science here connecting the two classroom wings and the sci science on this side. And then we've started to identify the CTE spaces here. Uh, so core learning, we have a, a large science chuck here and then CTE here. And so then as we started looking at the design and as you go, you think about it, you come in the front door, you're actually going to have this vista as it drops away from you looking out over that student commons area, hmm. which is what you see in this yellow block here in the, the left side of the plan that the, 
there's stairs coming down cascading. You'll have the uh, kitchen and serving area here, but then you'll have this nice open railing system and be able to look out into uh, those spaces from the upper floor. Uh, and so then on the lower floor, we have a balance of the light blue is the special education area and the teal is the CTE area. And again, the core learning areas. Ideas that those are flexible, whether they're grade level based or they're discipline based uh, between there. Uh, and so we've really been working and we're continuing to work. Uh, we're gonna be back here tomorrow, uh, going through some of the existing spaces and back again on Friday, meeting with uh, CTE and athletics. We're gonna try and get a couple other meetings set up as well to really kind of hone in on the plan. And again, as we talked about that broad image and schematic design, we're trying to get all the parts in the right places and we're getting finer and finer detail as we work, work through there until we resolve on a plan that we would bring back to you uh, next month uh, from a design per, for schematic design approval uh, that would represent architectural and engineering portion of that. So the fun part though is we've actually started looking at the exterior design of the building. Uh, and so what we've had the opportunity to do is work with the district staff look at the overall design so this would be as you approach from the 20 fm 2483 you would have the performing and fine arts area here we're looking at like an art art courtyard and then this would be the main administration space and the main entry into the facility so this would be the main entry you'd have your art courtyard here and as you turn around you can start to see the grade slope away from the front door and really reveal the two-story portion of the building. What angle you look at it, whether it's thin. Here we look at, you know, using predominantly masonry materials on the exterior of the building, kind of give it a collegiate feel uh, within design, some accents of uh, metal panel, uh, and really focused on some of the design elements of the stairs uh, and really offering those opportunities to let natural light into those common spaces with overall when in the design. So as we spin around here on the east side, uh, what you see here in this entrance here and this one here would be the CTE entrance. So it's again that idea of you have that welcoming area for visitors who are coming in, your vendors and partners would be able to come directly into that entrance. And so as you come around this side, you'll see the kind of high bay labs of the CTE space. This would be the bus drop off loop and you can kind of just see a snippet on the left side of the football field. And so all this is starting to relate within this courtyard design. Uh, you'd come up and at this point, you would have the opportunity to go down towards the cafeteria space or up towards the library. Uh, so right here on this elevation, you've got the library here on this side and that's kind of continuous modern glass that this would be the kitchen cafeteria space and kind of a little perch here uh, in terms of the a CTA space looking out. And so this well, would be, be the, the outdoor. So love that, won't they? So this is the out outdoor courtyard space uh, where, you know, you have the educational environment right here to your right. You've got the food area right here and then the library there on the left side of the image. You just think about what you could do out there, programs or gatherings. Or, or in I'll play it one more time just in case you missed something. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. That's pretty cool. Microphone. That's neat. Mm -hmm. uh, Can you do that toss again? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we, we still have a lot of work to do in terms of overall on the design, but really trying to get the intent and the materials. Uh, and this will be a, an evolution here as we move. So thinking that that's a, the green is grass? Yes, All sir, grass right area, now. so it's open. So, so as you think about it, and this gives a good perspective about when we talk about the amount of open space on the property, yeah. there's a lot of green space out here. Uh, we've talked about, and you see some lines here that go horizontal, that there could be a future building addition that connects the two wings and creates another courtyard. Uh, you could have the green space here. A lot, a lot of different opportunities from the design on that side. You know that it looks functional and looks practical without being overdone. Um, hmm. Interesting how this has developed from plans to that. It's a lot of fun on, on, on our side being able to, to play with it. A little more than Legos, but yep. Right, Jane. I've got a quick question. Um, I know that you guys have discussed this idea of the shared teaching spaces. Mm -hmm. And for anybody who's slightly confused about that, can we have a little more expansive explanation on what that means? So I'll go back here to the plan real quick. So as we went through 
let me start with the reason why. Uh, and part of the reason why is about building efficiency. And so the, the idea is that uh, one, it, one side of how often is that classroom empty? And so our goal is to be able to minimize that, meaning that you're using that space as much as you can uh, from that perspective. Uh, the, other the other reason is, is that we wanna find one collaboration space within the building is as we talk about uh, having students learn 21st century learning skills about collaboration and communication and technology and those kind of things. A lot of the times that that may, it may not happen just in the classroom, that it's happening outside the classroom, whether it's impromptu, those kind of things. So we're trying to identify that space. Uh, and then the third reason is, as you look, as you look, and there's a little this orange block right here, or orange, excuse me, the red block uh, that's right here uh, <laughs> on the plan is what we're calling the teacher think tank. And so the idea is that all the teachers can come together in that space, and they're in one spot. So it allows for uh, horizontal and vertical planning between the teachers. Uh, and so that may mean that maybe that wing is English and history, and so then you have English and history teachers together. So when you write your history paper, you're also getting graded on the English side of things as mm -hmm. well. So yeah, I know I'm an elementary school teacher, so we're all about the visual aids and things like that. But I also know that even at the high school level, people are really need to display things on the wall. So that I can't, I'm having a hard time visualizing so, how one teacher could have things up and another teacher needs their things up and where do you store all your things and somebody else is gonna to touch my stuff and all that. So, and, and there's a lot of discussion. So the, the, the real life example that you have here is New Tech is actually using this model and so they have the think tank and the destination. So a lot of your things may be included in that classroom uh, or in that teacher think tank uh, you know, your purse, your files, those kind of things. You're accessible by the students in that area. Uh, and then within the classroom, it may be that you have it three quarters of the day, so you get this half of the room and you kind of have to share. Uh, you know, and that's really up to the teachers and working through. We had a lot of discussions with this with administration, but we also had it with staff and teachers. So when we went to the core learning teachers, we talked to them about it and everybody gave us the, the thumbs up that yes, we're part of it and we're ready for that and, and able to make that happen for our, the students. I would just say, and I know a lot of times when you open these schools, it's, you know, people kind of have a choice to transfer right. and they would, you know, you'd want to let them know that up front, this is what you're going to be doing there. It's going to be slightly different. And if you're, if you're on board with that, then be on board with that. So. That's right. That's a, the philosophy of the the, faci the the design of the facility, and um, you know, teachers obviously will need to come on board with it. Yeah, and and I think that's a really good point. I've heard some feedback. Some teachers think this is the best thing they've ever seen, and some people teachers aren't so sure they are ready to give up a classroom. And so there's wide spectrum on that. Um, and I suspect in a building like this, you're gonna end up with a, some combination too, because it's not gonna be full. We're talking about a 2,500 student school that won't be a capacity when we open it or even in the next three years, I hope. I'm oh, gonna say better grow into capacity. So in theory, um, all of those things are what it does when it's full capacity too. And so I, I would, wouldn't be surprised if somebody, well, they're the only one who's using that classroom this year, for example. Yeah, so one of, so that's uh, let me just say one of the things that we really like about the design is that those um, teacher spaces are going to be very open with glass looking into the hall area so that we have um, good supervision of students in those areas. And so we saw that in Tom Glenn High School who had a very similar kind of design and we saw teachers actually working in there who could see in the, into those hallway spaces where students were moving um, and, and in also into those collaborate, collaboration spaces. So kids were able to go out and work in the, the collaboration spaces and yet there was still supervision in adults that could actually see them versus sitting in a classroom where they can't see what's happening in the hall. So uh, we like that aspect of it. And when we went and visited that, the teachers we talked to said, this is kind of neat. We Un, unintended or unexpected benefits of doing some of that was kind of an intriguing part of it. But um, obviously you move into space and adjust, but we've experienced great experience at, at Belton New Tech High School at Wasco with this model. Mm -hmm. And so they like it and it does work. And, and there's still stuff on the walls at there. So uh, somehow they figure it out. Teachers are creative and resourceful. They figure it out. 
been my experience. <laughs> and to Dr. Cannon's point, we've really looked at this with, for the core learning areas who so we're not ex anticipating science to share and CTE share, so you're not gonna go teach, you know, biomedical in the ag shop, you know, kind of thing, you know, right. that, that just doesn't work, you know, so it's really where it makes sense. Good. I never had my own classroom. I was a traveling teacher all my career, and I loved it, especially two times of the year whenever everybody was packing up and unpacking. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the 20 a perspective. That's what the Pushed my book cart down to the book room, and I was you done. Didn't, you didn't like yeah. decorating? A, no. No. <laughs> I can tell you that packing up, that's what those 22 kids are for. <laughs> Elementary teachers would have a harder yeah. time with that too. That's a good point. So then overall, you've got the, the, the floor plan, the site plan, the images. We're gonna be continuing to work here over the next month. Uh, and so we're anticipating to come back in June uh, for the comprehensive high school number two schematic design approval. So we will have a very similar packet of information as the elementary school to, to communicate about the high school. Uh, that information w will go and has already gone to the construction manager at risk, so they're starting to work on pricing uh, as we look at schematic design prices uh, to, to uh, kind of negotiate through the, the budget and some of the decisions. Uh, and then as we look out beyond June, uh, we will be looking uh, for the elementary school DD uh, phase being completed. Uh, we'll get the comprehensive high school two estimate, uh, and then we will be kicking off the Lakewood Gym and Wall Street Auditorium projects as well. So. Uh, we were told we want those done as soon as we can, so that's what we're going to start working towards. Great. Good questions. Anybody else have anything for Jared? One thing I'm curious about, and I know it's early, but on that lower okay. level floor plan, where would you envision the elevators being? So right right now, we're, we're currently talking about one elevator, and what we're looking at is a little spot about right there, which is right here on this plan. Uh, that would be close to the front door. So when you look at the upper floor, that would be this little block right there, and that little right block at the main right entrance, there. and right center. near the main entry. It's central within That's the school, uh, and right now from the lower level, the the discussion is we have the loop that would come in here for to support special education. That we would create this as an entry, and this four room suite right here is the life skills room. Uh, so the Entry is right here from the special ed loop and life skills is right here. That would be some of the, the students with the, the most needs. Uh, so they have a clear entrance from the outside. There's a clear access to the elevator to be able to get them up and down throughout the school. Thank good, you. good question. Thank you for asking. I have one more on the, where you talked about the balcony being able to look over. Yes, sir. Is there gonna be glass there all the way? Right, right now, we, we, we would be proponents of not doing that uh, from an interactivity and, and looking standpoint. A lot of the times what we'll do, uh, we had toured a school like Success High School, and it may be something like this, that there's a work counter that's here, but it's 24 inches deep, so you don't have clear access to this edge. Uh, and we'll go through the design of, yeah. you know, that, that is often where there are problems. And well, I was safe, at safe. Ellison High School. I was breaking up a fight one day, and I had a Coke poured on me, a book thrown on my head <laughs> from up above. So Now we're just going fight, to fight on that because the, the physics teacher said that's the perfect place to do the egg drops. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't have eggs that just day. Just don't, so don't sure drop eggs drop on Ty's head. Yeah, just yeah, not on right. people, just yeah. for the it physics awesome. of it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> And actually, that counter uh, was pretty neat at Success High School because it became a work station for students, but also a charging station where they could sit and yeah. work and, and charge plug, their devices. Plug in. So it was a pretty nice design. And so it, it, as we do talk about those elements, and you had mentioned about mascot and name earlier, uh, just in terms of, you know, we would love as we go through the design process to be able to start branding this, uh, you know, so as we look at certain elements and, you know, if there is a balcony and, and there are the eagles, then we can create the eagle's nest or, you know, whatever that is and be able to create the, the icons and the graphics within the design. So clearly not eagles, just in this. Just, you know, okay. <laughs> Making people nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Just giving an example. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. So good deal. Okay. Good questions. Any any other questions? Thank you for the for the tour. Yes, uh, it's absolutely. it's really great to be able to get a better visual and understand the uh, uh, what it is that we're looking at. That's helpful as as this develops.
know that's going to evolve we'll over time, but good to We've know. had lots and lots and lots of feedback on uh, what you've seen so far, and so if there's anything significant that you have a question about or some input you want to provide, um, please let us know because we're moving pretty, pre at a pretty good pace mm -hmm. um, towards schematic design approval process. So, uh, and we want to thank everyone who participated. We've had lots of meetings over the last many weeks. Two to three months, yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. I guess at this point we need to um, entertain, I would entertain a motion to approve the schematic design for elementary school 11 as presented uh, earlier by Jared. I have a motion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. Ms. Lee made the motion. I have a second. All right. Mr. Taggart's going to make the second on that. Welcome to the board. <laughs> That's a good motion to, to jump in there. Anybody have any comments or questions? All in favor of the motion, raise a hand. That passes unanimously. Your first motion and second was passed unanimously. Put that in your, your book. Okay. Uh, that completes our agenda except for uh, anything anybody wants to bring up or requests for future agenda or uh, administrative reports that we might get. Uh, Jeff? Okay, Jenny, you got anything? I don't have anything. I will say it's very interesting to think about the tone and tenor of this meeting had the outcome been different on the election. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm glad it went this way. Yeah. <laughs> we have much to be thankful for, yes. don't we? Yes. Sue, do you have anything? I do not. Anything? Okay, well, let me, um, let's go to the future events. Uh, Dr. Kincan's already given us some, and I just want to, this is, the next two weeks is pretty packed. There are lots and lots of <coughs> events, and I'm not going to begin to mention can I, all of them. Can I say something? Please, okay. of course. So I do have something to say. So <laughs> <laughs> to our new board members and to our current board members, I am just going to stand out here on a limb and encourage you all to participate and uh, come with us as we uh, go to the various events that the children are participating in. It's amazing to watching them getting these awards and all the accolades, and it's just something that you just have to see. So I encourage you all to, to join us. I try to get to as much as I can, but I, I'd love for you all to join us. And we have those wonderful media <coughs> invites, and we have the Looking Ahead calendar, so you can just kind of plan it all out and see you every night this week. Yep. <laughs> there are things every night. And There's I will tell you, in a, in at the by June first, after we get past graduation, it drops off pretty significantly in our mm -hmm. our opportunities. But uh, again, Dr. King Kenner already mentioned the scholarship awards, Belton High School on um, the 18th. Um, Want to mention Miller Heights 50th, proud to be an American Day on May 19th, the 50th year to celebrate proud to be an American Day. That's a great event. Um, uh, Belton High School Senior Awards on the 22nd. The Teacher of the Year Luncheon is on the 23rd for lunch, and then for dinner, the Belton New Tech High School at Wasco Senior Banquet. So two meals in one day. Um, on the 27th, which is a Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, we'll have the Belton High School Athletic Wall of Honor Ceremony. We'll, we'll be inducting some new students into that. Uh, baccalaureate is on the 28th, and uh, special thanks to the Belton Ministers Fellowship for sponsoring that again this year and hosting that. Uh, we have no role in that. We're just invited guests. We'll be in the audience if, if you're able to attend. Graduation, obviously, is on June 1st times 2. And then just to keep on your calendar, we'll, we go to training, to, to the TASB uh, Summer Leadership Training on the 14th through the 17th. Our next regular meeting is on June 19th. Um, and before, between now and next meeting, we have a couple of birthdays to celebrate. Jeff Norwood's birthday is on the 17th on Wednesday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday a little early to Jeff and Sue Jordan on June 10th. We'll have a birthday. So happy birthday a little early okay. for you too. That is all I have. Connie, did we miss anything? Got yep. everything? Good. It is 8.03 and we are adjourned. <laughs>